Well, I'll tell you more than that, Rick. You're going to need some time off just to have a little breather, because I know how hard you work. Uh, and, and you, mate. Well, thanks, mate. But, I mean, you blinking work hard. But uh, Carl's been on holiday again, hasn't he? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, because, Carl, you, you don't do anything. And you have weekends off. You take at least five or six weeks holiday a year, even though you haven't got a job now. You're meant to be doing this. And yet you still so go you're on holiday. So you a holiday, basically. Yeah, why do you need a holiday? To, you, you, you potter around. Cause you, it, you, your, big, your big day last week was going to the cobblers. So... Why did you need a break so much this oh, week? It's, it's just that, uh, you know, it's it's good for your brain and that, isn't it? It's, it's, it opens well, it up a bit. You are not evidence for that. Where did you go? Gran Canaria. For a week? Yeah. Just sitting around? Um, well, there isn't much else to do at Gran Canaria. I mean, I don't want to go slagging a place off because every time I seem to talk about somewhere, I get into trouble for it. Right. But it's just a, like a big rock. It's yeah. just vol volcanic, isn't it? It's and you must have looked like a, a little barnacle on that. Have you been there before? Um, been been near it before to another rock. Which was just, but it what, was just. But what you had your fingers Why did you go back? Because you think, well, they can't have loads of these islands that are the same, like just a big rock with hotels on. They can't get away with it. So you <laughs> think they well, obviously the next are one. getting away with it. <laughs> but why why do you keep going to these places that are rocks? Why don't you investigate first? Ask your travel agent. Is this a giant rock? Because because that's what you do, isn't it? You go and find out yourself. I mean, <laughs> when when Armstrong went to the moon, what was he expecting up there? That's a fact that it's a big rock. And he still went all that way. <laughs> I don't so, know what that so, point was. No, so, what, so what I'm saying is, though, sometimes... It, tell, it, us it, about the, tell us about the moon landing. What, as you started it, what do you know about that? Because, you know, I mean, so far you've given us a lot of insight into, into the, uh, the moon landing. So there was Armstrong. There was, uh, there was Armstrong and that. Yeah. There was a um, fella called Buzz. Yeah. And another bloke. Yeah. Poor bastard. Yeah, never remembered. <laughs> yeah, go on. And uh, they went up there, got out. Two of them did. One of them didn't bother. The one whose name don't know who he was. Didn't even get out, stretch his legs right. Went all that way. They had a potter about, had a wander, came back again. Yeah. So that's all you need to know, isn't it? Yeah. And in your opinion, pointless. Um, to me, yeah. But to them, I'm sure they had a good time, and that's what I'm saying. Sometimes you just take the risk, don't you? Go and visit a place, make up your own mind. And so, you, what do you make of this place? You enjoy it, Grand Canaria? It was just a big rock, but did you? you I bet you... the moon was better. Really? <laughs> what did you do? It was just, uh, you know, it's one of them. It was big hotel, which is um, that's where I made a mistake. It was one of those like big, massive places where there's loads of people. And you know, you go for your dinner. That describes a hotel. Yeah. No, no, no. no. Me. You've nailed that. But I've the, been to a few, that sounds like it. No, but <laughs> do, you know, do you know what I mean, though? There's the sort, there's the nice small ones where mm. it's just enough people, but this is like mental. And and it was all, it was it was full of old people, really. Ugh. I mean, that's, that's probably why it's called Grand Canaria, right? Because it's just Grand old people. Everywhere. Yeah, right. But what I thought I'd start doing is uh, start a diary. Okay, why? Just because. I, I sort of had a bit of time on my hands and that. Just thought, write it down, write write stuff down. And do you hope that this one day will become one of the great literary documents like Samuel Pepys' diary? Um, I haven't heard of that. Is it any good? <laughs> You've never heard of Samuel Pepys' diary? No, they're, the they're, most they're, famous diary uh, other than probably Anne Frank's. I've heard of Anne Frank's and that, and I thought if she's sat in a you know a loft, knocking stuff up. Not much going on in her life at that point, yet sure. she was still writing it down. Yeah, whereas she'd be the great area, yeah. I thought, so there is stuff going on that I can chat about. Start a diary. Sure. You started a diary? Yeah. And what are you going to do? You, did you did you keep it up every day? Yeah, just... Uh, oh, can I read it, please? Well, a diary's meant to be sort can, of... Please, can I read some out on this podcast? I... Carl! Some of it, though, is only relevant to me. It's sort of oh, thing. this is... Please, give me it. Oh my god. I mean, this isn't. I'm just. Look so how big it is! <laughs> <laughs> it's oh one my of god. desk diaries. It's huge. It's about a foot long. And it's. Ma oh, that is amazing. Imagine if Anne Frank had been like that. As she got out. <laughs> right. Uh, everyone would have heard it clang down on the desk. Yeah, but my writing's quite big, isn't it? Oh, look. Give us oh, that. Do give you us know, that. Do you know about joined up writing? Have you this, heard about it's that? No amazing. Point. Sometimes you can't read it, can you? So it's right, better okay. to. Right, okay. Oh, look. At, look, at oh, look the, oh my god. It starts on the first day. This is this is wonderful. Going on holiday to Gran Canaria today. Woke up to the news that Tony Banks had died. There was a piece of on the news about how everyone was shocked. Got me thinking about an invention that would be good. Right, a, a watch that counted down your life. 
if it says you've got three days left, <laughs> go to the doctors. <laughs> <laughs> Told Suzanne about invention, she said she wouldn't buy one. But she said that about the iPod. How, uh, and how would this device work, this watch? I mean, how would you, uh, how would you know when you were about to die? Have you, is that a concern? Again, not for you to worry about, presumably the boffins. And the no, all I was thinking is that Tony Banks fella, you know, he died and everyone was shocked about it. But if you had like a little watch on. But how does it, you can't just say, wouldn't it be good? How, how would this work? Yeah, um, I imagine you're in the patent office going, got an idea. They go, oh, certainly, yeah, Mr. Bogdan, what's your idea? Watch, they're counting down your life. Oh, how does that work? What? Just, just wear well, it, just pop it on your wrist. No, 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 what do you mean, just pop it on your wrist? How does it work? Just pop it on your wrist. Brilliant. You're an idiot. Well, it's interesting that he goes on. The flight to Gran Canaria was a bit bumpy. I thought about the clock that counts down your life again, and I wondered if it would know if you were going to die in a disaster. <laughs> no, <laughs> he's querying his own, his own design. He's wondering yeah. if he would know. He's invented this. He's invented it, and now he's <laughs> over shot. Uh, a fella on the plane was reading Koi Mag. It was a fishing magazine. I glanced over and noticed he was reading the Pond of the Month article. <laughs> Don't think they could make it into a weekly magazine. Well, to be fair to you, I because re I remember seeing a guy on the train once reading Carp Monthly, yeah. a magazine do dedicated entirely to carp, and it had it had Carp of the Month. And I just thought, you know, once you're like three months in, the editor must be stressing. Have we got any more carp? Have we got a carp that's actually done anything? I reckon if they use the same one twice, there wouldn't be many complaints. No one would be noticing. No, th well, that's the carp they used two years ago. There was a really fat bloke on the plane. He was playing on his PSP. While I waited to go to the toilet, I looked at what game he was playing. It was darts. He's that fat and lazy, he can't even face playing a more active game on a games console. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Suzanne got off the coach along with a couple of old people. One of them was in a wheelchair. I don't think it was wise of them to come to a volcanic island with a wheelchair. <laughs> Everywhere is pretty rough, paving and slopey. Guess I'll keep an eye on it as the weeks go on. Day two in Gran Canaria. Brilliant, we're only at day two. The hotel's a bit odd. I've never seen as many cross-eyed people in one location. <laughs> Oh, that's enough, isn't it? That's amazing! Well, you may right. well let me read on a bit more. But this is amazing. Well, we'll come back this to is a brilliant now. diary. This might be the best diary ever written. Oh. While sat listening to the kinks on my iPod, I wondered if everybody thinks in their accent. I know I do. What's, what's this? What are you talking about? Just, just that, uh, you know, when I, when I've been sat there lying on the lounger, right? And I was thinking about stuff. How do you know you think in your accent? Tell me a typical thought. Because because what I mean is, say say if I was like, if I saw something, right? Do you know how I say like, oh, that's a bit weird, isn't it? That, <laughs> but that was I don't have said. to. But in I, when you think, I don't think the sentence is like I'm saying it. It's just a thought. The thought appears. It's conceptual and it's already there. It's not like um, I go, Rick, what? Just uh, looking at a fellow over there, were you? Yeah, I was yeah. Um, I was thinking it was a bit weird. Oh, so was I. I don't, I don't think out whole sentences. Whereas you have, Carl, Carl, li Carl, stop listening to the kinks for a minute. Look over there. More, more cross-eyed people. <laughs> no, well that's, yeah, that's Is that how your mind works? In a way, yeah. And Brilliant. that's when, it, because, because <laughs> that I thought... That explains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's great that you have to think about whole sentences. Cos I thought, that's weird, isn't it? Like, I didn't think, that's weird, isn't it? And I no. thought, I actually think in my accent. And then I thought... Does Stephen Hawking, does he, when he's doing his maths and that, hmm. is he, I don't know where he's from, so I don't know what his accent would be like. I think he's from, uh, Kent or Cambridge or Oxford right. or something. Right, so... So you think he might think in his... In, in his, his voice, in that, yeah. in that voice the computerised voice. Just wondered. Had lunch inside today due to shite weather. Sat next to an old fella. Old men's ears and noses carry on growing as they get older. Suzanne noticed his fingers were fat too. Maybe they continue to grow. Suzanne didn't laugh when I said her arse had the same problem. <laughs> day three, cloudy start to the day. Had pie and chips in a cafe. Had a bit of an argument with Suzanne because I thought it was daft that we were paying for food when we were on an all-inclusive holiday. Changed my mind when I saw the... They sold pie, though. <laughs> the cafe was called Tattoos. The fellow who owned it didn't have any tattoos. But we never saw his wife. <laughs> Brilliant. Had a drink in a bar. Everyone sat and watched one of the local cats lick its bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> it's the greatest holiday in the world! <laughs> uh, I've been entertained in that town. Went back.
back to the hotel and had a sleep before tea. I love the fact you're like, you're moaning about old people, but you're just as bad. <laughs> he's done nothing so far. <laughs> he's done nothing, he's got to be hip. <laughs> Woke up to news about ducks being badly treated. There was a really ugly one with bent legs. <laughs> I'm gonna die! I'm gonna die! Why does he write this down? Oh god. Oh. There is a fat bloke from Bolton who is in the pool as I write this. He's got a big tattoo on his back, but I can't work out what it is. Dot dot dot. He just got out of the pool and burped. You just felt like you had to see if I suppressed of that. <laughs> Everything's in the diary. I just seen it and get to the point where you're going, breathed in. <laughs> yeah. Breathed out again. There was a big fat fella in the sea who kept his t-shirt on. If you're big and fat, is there more chance of you getting burnt because there's more of you on show? I asked Suzanne and she said she didn't know in that sort of not listening kind of way. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to hang about to see if the fat bloke was going to get in the kayak. <laughs> but Suzanne, <laughs> Suzanne said we had a head back. <laughs> just let him wait in to see if he's going <laughs> to capsize. <laughs> we go home today so we got up early to get the last bit of cloud <laughs> no it's, it's just that it wasn't uh, it, it's, it's not that sunny all the time I mean I, I was sat in in weather that if it was like that air there's no way I'd be sat in the garden <laughs> yeah. but because you're on holiday it's like well we've got to sit in it put your coat on so are you going to continue to write this diary Every yeah, single day. It's amazing. Keep this diary up. It's no, amazing. I, I, no, I will. I will keep it up because what I find as well is, I think earlier on before I went away, I think I did learn something, and because I wrote it down, I, I remembered it a bit um, better. So what was that? I just was thinking then. I forgot it now, but <laughs> <laughs> but I remembered looking back at it and not having to read it all because I remembered the end of it before I read it if you know what I mean <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about well if you've enjoyed uh, um, the diary of Carl Pilkington um, more next week I hope another week's worth that's amazing I'm going to try and get that published we'll put the, uh, the odd page up on the uh, web go to rickygervais.com don't forget to register there as well so we can email you and let you know uh, what's happening brilliant well I've been waiting for this for a week um, it's a regular feature now when uh, we read from Carl's diary. Carl decided to keep a diary. He's gone through with it. I could see it there. It's massive. It's a huge desk diary that he has to carry around uh, with him. And uh, he, uh, is, the pages are getting full up. You're, you're really keeping to this. Yeah. Right, it, this is uh, extracts from Carl's diary. Did podcast and went for an Italian with Ricky and Steve. Italian place is good. We've been there a few times. I always have the same thing, spaghetti. Can't remember what everyone else had. Last time we went there, Steve had little octopuses with pasta. You could see that they were octopuses. They hadn't been cut up or anything. My rule is that I only eat stuff that looks nice when it's alive. <laughs> <laughs> a cow, a chicken, some fish. An octopus is an odd-looking thing alive. Even worse when it's dead and limp. It looks like it just shouldn't have been sat in the spaghetti. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree with that. <laughs> Ricky drew another picture of my head. We've given a few of them away as prizes, but he draws so many of them that they won't be worth as much anymore. <laughs> Everyone will eventually have one. Like those pictures of a boy crying that caused houses to burn down in the 1980s. What does that mean? What are you talking about? Don't you remember the... I mean, if you're listening in America, they might not have made it over there. Is it the, what, the, the, what, the sort of, like, the sugary ones with kids? Like, is it Techikov or something? It's just some kid. Uh, my auntie Nora had one, and it was just like... A kid with like a blue jumper on, and he's it's like a painting, not a photo. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And he's just crying. Like a chocolate box, it's really awful, sort of sugary. And what happened is it, they found out that a load of houses were being set on fire or burst into flames, whatever. And the weird thing was. Oh, it's bollocks. Every house that burnt down had that photo. Yeah, because every house had that picture in the <laughs> fucking 70s and 80s. <laughs> Idiot. It's like, we're linking it to sinks. Every house that's ever burnt down had a sink. <laughs> You're talking shit mm. again. Mm. Carry on. Wednesday. Saw a homeless bloke. I'm surprised that no companies have thought about sponsoring the homeless. Something like a clothing company. Give them some clothes that have an advert on the back. Everyone's a winner. Good idea. Not bad, is it? Got on the tube to Camden. Read in a free newspaper that hedgehogs could be gone by 2025. I think I've seen more dead hedgehogs than alive ones anyway, so I don't think I'll miss them. <laughs> Went round to Ricky's house and had a game of pool. 
It should have been nice and relaxing, but Jane gave me some cake, and Ricky said, I can't play Paul if my hands are all sticky from there, cake. It was the sugar. It was, and it wasn't that either. After he'd finished it, they weren't just sticky, he was licking his fingers, sucking his fingers off, and then was going to pick up Paul cues and touch things, and I was thinking, go and wash your hands after licking your hands. You're not a cat. This turned into an argument when I said I didn't want to wash my hands. Why didn't he? Disgusting. He goes for a piss all the time without washing his hands, and then <laughs> squeezes my head. I know I prefer to have lemon cake crumbs on my head than knob juice. I was going to do a crossword, but I'm tired and have learned enough today. What have you learned? Well, the stuff about hedgehogs and that. <laughs> 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 oh, God. I was on my way to my mates and I got on a train. Got close to a station, but realised I needed a wee. I was about to go in a cubicle when a blind man with a dog, who was bumbling his way through the walkway, came around. I said, are you after the toilet? He said, yeah. I said, it's on your right. I shouldn't have let him go first, as he took ages, and it would be my stop soon. The dog waited outside the cubicle. I was going to stroke it, but then I remembered someone telling me that you shouldn't. Don't know why, why not? Because something to do with uh, the owner should be the only one who who sort of deals with that dog, and you shouldn't. F- you well, you shouldn't stroke it because you'll cover it in fucking lemon cake. <laughs> no, but, but just because you know, if you if you stroke it and that, it, it might like like me and want to go off with me, and he'll come out and be lost and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not totally sure, but I just thought... Are you not, uh. Well, now to one of our most popular features. Um, I mean, this could even rival monkey news one day. It, I mean, it is monkey news. It's, it's, <laughs> you know, it's news from the point of view of a monkey, a shaved monkey. It's Carl Pilkerton's diary. Oh, he's written it down! Yeah! <laughs> Was that the jingle, or were you just, well, yeah, just sort annoyed of, about sort of. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <sighs> Went and did the podcast. We had a meeting after. I don't like meetings as I can't keep focused on what people are talking about. I think Ricky has the same problem as after 25 minutes he was trying to wrestle me. (laughs) I tried to do what spiders do and stayed still as if I was dead. And Ricky just stayed on top of me, not moving. A bit like when you see one of them big snakes swallowing a sheep. Ricky got bored and released me. I went home thinking, why had I left my old job for this? A homeless man asked me for some money, but I didn't feel like I should treat him as I felt that he probably had a better day than me. <laughs> oh, God. Suzanne called me to say she'd gone for a haircut and that she'd meet me in the supermarket. I went to the supermarket, but she wasn't there. I called her and she said she was near the fruit aisle. I went to the fruit aisle and she wasn't there. Turns out she was in a different supermarket (laughs) on the other side of town. And if I'd listened to her properly, I'd have known that. I didn't want to say that I... Well, you just went to the first supermarket you thought of, as opposed to listening to what supermarket... I'm in the supermarket. All right, bye. I didn't want to say that I hadn't heard her properly, because my ears were ringing a bit from the wrestling from earlier. (laughs) 25 minutes later, I met up with Suzanne. Her haircut wasn't that bad. Normally, her haircuts are followed by an argument between us as she pays over the odds for some daft haircut that's the latest style. Brilliant. I wish she'd take a picture out of a magazine or ask for a style rather than letting the hairdresser do what she wants. I said I only tell her to do this as she's got a square head and a close-cut <laughs> hairdo makes it look squarer. She said, what do you think of this cut? I said it looked all right as I couldn't be bothered arguing about it. It's weird writing a diary. I don't know who thought of doing one of these first. The last time I did one was at school. They used to get you to do it so they could keep an eye on whatever you were up to. My diary used to say the same thing every night. Got home, went to the shop to get potatoes, bread, milk. Went home, watched telly, went to bed. I think I might have gone to Twiggy's Dance Club just so I had something different to write. You've not told us about Twiggy's Dance Club. It's just, uh, you know, I sort of, when I was a kid, I sort of gave everything a bit of a go. I did boxing and that, didn't I? Gave that a go. Um, about 45 minutes and uh, yeah a mate a mate sort of said oh you know you're into your dancing your robotics and that you're doing, <laughs> doing your body popping right body popping and that he said uh, you ought to come to Twiggy's and um, I went there um, but I didn't go in it was shut it was, <laughs> it was they, they were just having like loads of toilet rolls delivered I think like <laughs> they, they were like using it as a storage place for toilet rolls and that so I said oh I've come to have a dance and like oh not tonight come back tomorrow <laughs> I never went back. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, oh, what, a wa- what a waste of an anecdote. <laughs> right. <laughs> Brilliant. Just to recap, you're convinced then that the teachers are asking you to keep diaries so they can keep tabs on you. 
um, and then to continue the diary. As there were more problems happening on the estate, they started to add Saturday and Sundays to the school diary to keep an eye on what we were doing at the weekend. I struggled to fill it on a Sunday, as the shop I got potatoes and bread from was shot on a Sunday. <laughs> I had to go over to Shepherd's Bush to meet someone. I got the tube. There was a badly burnt man on the tube. It's amazing how the body can continue through quite a lot of bad stuff. It got me thinking about how much stuff you could remove in your body, one by one, without dying. If it was a competition, the cockroach would win, as it can live for a week without a head. I just mean, like, say, say if, you know, they run out of ideas for TV programmes and that, right? They get someone who isn't well. They go, look, do you mind if we make a programme on you? And what they do, they sit them in the bed, and they go, right, what we're going to do now is take out the heart, but replace it with a pacemaker. Right, No, 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 no. Sorry. People with pacemakers don't have their heart taken out and a pacemaker popped in. All right, then. Um, some sort of machine. What what I'm getting to is... Have you been playing Operation? What I mean is... <laughs> what I mean is the big finale would just be a head chatting with loads of wires going into it, and it's like, look what we can do with science. Good. <laughs> That's what the programme's called. It's the same every week. The volunteer is just ahead with loads of wires going out Look of it. Look what we can do with science. And he's going, Goodbye. Oh, I'm Got some post delivered to me today. It was... <laughs> oh, this is this great. This makes it in the diary. Got some post delivered to me today. It was addressed to Mr. Dilkington. <laughs> I got some post delivered to me today. It was addressed to Mr. Dilkington. <laughs> I opened it and the first sentence read, Dear Mr. K. Dilkington, you're one of our most valuable customers. I put it in the bin. Thought I would learn some new words, as Steve always says I don't use enough different words. I read in the Fortean Times that the word "wew" means an ugly female ghost with drooping breasts. <laughs> Is what? that how I'm, am I pronouncing that right? Who's using that woo, word? Woo, woo, Who is woo. using that it word? Was, it was just W-E-W-E. Let's call it a woo. Mm. An ugly female ghost with drooping breasts. <laughs> I think I'm right when I say there are too many words in the world. I don't think I will ever get round to using the word woo. Watched a health programme. Wasn't watching it properly, but heard some doctors say that we only get so many heartbeats in a lifetime, so don't do too much exercise. <laughs> I told Suzanne, and she said I probably hadn't heard it right. We got talking about death. Suzanne said she didn't like thinking about it. I said she might end up being a woo. <laughs> I was chuffed as I'd managed to use my new word. I went to the supermarket to get tonight's tea. On the way, I stopped and looked in the fishmongers at all the different fish they had in the window. It's like a child in, like in one of those kids' TV shows. I know! Mr. Kil Mr. Pilkington went to the fishmonger. He stopped and looked at all the fish in the window. Hello, Mr. Dilkington, they said. <laughs> there was a newspaper clipping stuck on the glass about a two-headed fish that they've made in Taiwan. I don't see the point in doing this as a fish having two heads ain't going to solve the world's hunger problems, as the head is the bit you throw away. Invent a fish with two bodies, and I'd say well done. Good point, aren't it? Suzanne watched one of her favourite TV programmes. I've told her the telly only goes on if there's something she wants to watch. If there's nothing on, she has to talk to me about stuff I've learnt. Like Descartes. Watched a programme on him the other day. He is the one who said something like, I know I'm about because I dream. Doesn't work for everything because ants don't sleep. <laughs> I don't know if I'd like that or not. You don't know if you would like it if you didn't ever not sleep. sleeping. It's just one long day. I don't know. Don't know how you'd put up with that. Do you think it'd be a good idea? No. Why not? <laughs> because, as you said, it would get a bit boring. You know, you'd sleep is your rest, your time off. It, get, it, it, it helps you uh, detoxify. It helps you sort of um, think things through on a subconscious level. It, it, you know, but don't it, you ever get it where, I mean, sometimes it's brilliant to have a sleep when you're tired, but don't you sometimes yeah, feel that's like... that's the best time to have a sleep when yeah. you're tired. No, yeah. but sometimes when you go to bed and you're not that tired and you're kind of thinking, oh, I'm going to waste some hours of my life now and I'm not really in the mood for this. Well, that's thing. just wishing you had longer on this earth doing creative things. I mean, if you didn't have to sleep, you could spend more time talking to a tortoise and going to the toffee shop. <laughs> well, it's that time again. Uh, 
It's the feature that the world is saying could rival Monkey News one day. Ready? Oh, what's he written today? <laughs> what, Carl's Diary? You didn't yeah. explain what it was, Carl's Diary. Actually, as some one person said, if we are going to get it published, we could maybe publish it as The Diary of an Idiot. Very good. So, um, you know, a little riff there on one of the most famous diaries. Sunday, got up. Sunny day, so I went for a walk in the park. There was a bloke walking down the street who was whistling uh, some kind of annoying tune. He seemed quite happy with himself. Do people only whistle when they're happy? I don't whistle very much. It's a good point. I I'm whistling is so inane to me. But yeah, be, be, it's sort of like going, I'm, I'm, I'm content, I'm... Uh, it, it really is that thing that if they go, uh, you go, well, um, Mr. Mellows, I'm afraid uh, I've got some bad news. Not only has your wife died, but you've lost the house. Thanks, Doctor. Won't happen. No, <laughs> you don't whistle it, yeah. when you're sad. The other place you hear, of course, is uh, changing rooms, and that's men going. <laughs> I'm whistling, so I'm not looking at your cock. <laughs> How could I be? I'm concentrating. I'm whistling. <laughs> <laughs> the lake was frozen over where I was walking. The ducks looked worried. <laughs> they were sat on the edge of the lake, waiting for it to melt. Where are they, Carl? Yeah, we're just sat there, looking, sort of going, "Oh, what's going on?" <laughs> I don't know. I how, how long is a duck's memory? Because I wondered whether they're going, this doesn't seem right, but I don't know why. I asked Suzanne, <laughs> why ducks don't use their wings much? They seem to walk and swim more and don't bother using their wings. Suzanne said she had to call her mum and dad, so I never got an answer. <laughs> the old excuse! <laughs> <laughs> Suzanne, oh, I can't talk now, Carl. Um, Gotta I've... phone my mum. <laughs> there was a marathon-type run going on in the park. It reminded me of the time when we were moving flat. It was the day of the London Marathon. Me and Suzanne were walking down the middle of the road, taking some stuff to our new flat. I was carrying a lamp and a kitchen bin. People were clapping me, thinking I was doing some kind of fun run. Yeah. <laughs> Why were you walking on the same route? Because I, it was when we lived on the Docklands. Oh, uh, brilliant. There was, there was no other route. The flat was just about... Hundred yards down the road. They're going. Look at the bloke with the bald wig. He's <laughs> yeah. carrying a lamp and a bin. Took a bag of old clothes to Oxfam. It was just old T-shirts and a couple of jumpers with holes in it. I don't think anyone will buy them. But the Oxfam is closer to the flat than the wheelie bin is. <laughs> <laughs> on the tube on the way back home, saw an advert for a book about a woman who works in a funeral home. She went into work one day. Uh, she goes to work on a body. She takes the sheet off of one of the bodies. And it looks exactly like her. This is called a doppelganger. The What's thing, a doppelganger to you? It's the thing I read about in ages ago where um, someone was uh, walking down the street. Yeah, and he sees someone who looked a bit like him. And No, this was weirder than that. Go right. on. Um, he, he, he remembers like going down that street as a kid on his bike whistling. Yeah. And then he sort of is walking down the street, going to get some milk or whatever from the shop. Little bike comes whizzing past. He hears the whistling, he goes, that's weird. Looks at it, it was him when he was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like a time. Oh, shit. What do you mean, it was him as a kid? This this is like a different form of doppelganger. It's just, uh um, well, It's impossible, it's rubbish. Some sort of time thing, isn't it? No, no, it's, it's not even that's impossible, so don't worry about it. It's just a time thing, Rick. No, no, no. Yeah, it's something you read thing. again on the internet, or it was a short story, or something someone told you. Mm. On my walk back from the tube, I saw a jogger who was pushing a pram at the same time. The kid looked terrified. <laughs> <laughs> Got my science book out. It said that the static you get on the telly when a channel isn't tuned in properly is radiation that is still knocking about from when the Big Bang happened. I thought about the Big Bang and wondered if it was really a Big Bang or did it just sound louder as there was no other noise to drown it out. <laughs> Good point, aren't it? Carl's diary, Rick, never ceases to amaze. More from uh, that next week. I don't believe it. He's written it down. <laughs> well, that's the jingle that signals it's time for more extracts from Carl's diary. And uh, we'll lunge straight into it. Wandered down Carnaby Street. There was a happy homeless fella. I gave him £1.50. I thought of a tongue twister after giving him the money. It goes, if you can't treat a cheerful tramp, what sort of tramp can you treat? It's good, that. All Say right. it fast. If you can't treat a cheerful tramp, what sort of tramp can you treat? Yeah, good, isn't it? Good, that, yeah. You've got too much time on your hands, Carl. <laughs> Learned some famous quotes to see if they are as good as my sayings. Number one, treat every day as if it's your last. Very famous saying. Now, is that something you do, Carl? Um, 
But you know, me, me problem with that one is that if it was your last, you wouldn't want to be doing much. That's, that's the only problem I've got with that. I wouldn't want to, you know, go to a, a fairground or whatever because you're going, oh, it's my last day, what am I going to do? And I think you'd spend so much time worrying about what you're going to do that you'd end up staying in. I think you're right. Um, you've taken some of the poetry out of it. I think it means live life to the fullest, right? I like the fact that you were musing on the idea that if it was your last day, you'd go to the fair. <laughs> 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 it's getting such a 19th century way of spending your final day. I know, yeah. yeah. Um, well, the thing is, the, the other thing is that, um, the only thing that people get depressed about in terms of sort of like, um, you know, life and death is, uh, not the knowledge that they're gonna die, but more the knowledge that they know they're going to die when they're dying. If someone told you, um, no one ever knows when they're going to die, no one ever gets an illness, no one ever gets hit by a truck, everyone passes away peacefully in their sleep, dreaming they're riding a big marshmallow, right? Then you wouldn't care about anything. It wouldn't matter when, it wouldn't matter if you died tomorrow or in 30 years' time. You'd just live life to the full. You'd come, you'd, you'd have, every day would be great. You'd go out, you'd come back, you'd fall asleep. That would be amazing. There'd be no stress. There'd be no, there'd be no angsty, oh, we're all gonna die stress. Cause it wouldn't matter. Cause it would just be your life. Wouldn't it be amazing if someone guaranteed you, Carl, you're gonna die in your sleep? I'm not gonna tell you when. Yeah, but you'd... some people do, don't they? Well, exactly. Yeah, but I we know, never know we're going to, cause we, we stress. What if we get a dreadful illness? What if we, you know. But, know. but we're almost not letting people die naturally anymore now because we're always bodging stuff up what do you mean well someone who might naturally die in the sleep aren't allowed to naturally die in the sleep because they wake them up with those electric things and get them going again and pop in a new lung or whatever whilst they're at it that's what i'm saying they don't just you never hear it anymore do you frank peacefully died in his sleep no he died on the operating table whilst we're putting in a new lung they never they don't die naturally anymore Frank died peacefully with 40,000 volts going through them and a couple of people going, clear, clear, rushing about today, got to get a lot done as I'm flying to Malaga tomorrow to see my mum and dad. Don't like flying, I'd be happy if they give you a parachute instead of a life jacket. They say Da Vinci invented the parachute as well as the helicopter. He never got round to making them though because he only drew them on some paper. Got up at 5am as I had to get to Heathrow to get on the plane to see mum and dad in Malaga. Went out for a drink with a cousin who lives in Spain. Ain't seen her for 27 years. Oh, that must have been tricky, making conversation. I didn't really bother. Because <laughs> where do you start? I might no, as well so go up to anyone in the street and start having a chat. <laughs> yeah, you have to get further back then. Uh, did you want Chantal to win, big brother? <laughs> yeah. Me dad and me talked about history. I said we shouldn't go on about things that happened ages ago because I bet something similar has happened more recently. Brilliant. <laughs> read about an island in the Indian Ocean where there are tribesmen still living like they're cavemen a helicopter tried to land and the tribesmen chucked spears at them this is what I meant about not having to talk about things that happened ages ago we have got new cavemen now so why do we talk about the old ones people could have lived before but computers and all that blew up and books got burnt so all they had left was what these tribesmen have got left Rambling, <laughs> that's the rambling man of a maniac. That I mean, that's it. just a few hours before you go crazy with a gun in there. No, but what what I mean there is right. Mm. Say if all this has happened before, right? Podcasting's been happening years ago. Mm. Something happens again. Right? Lot of your information from the Planet of the Apes. <laughs> Something happens. World ends, mm. right? We come back again somehow. Yeah. <laughs> it's the detail you leave out that makes yeah. you intriguing. Just like the watch that you can wear that uh, tells you when you're going to die. How does it work? Pop it on your wrist. That's yeah. all the detail you need. So the world happened. No. We came back. We. Um, yeah. Have you seen the pictures? <laughs> Forget it then if you don't get it. It's interesting that you had all those profound thoughts about this this period in the past <laughs> when they all lived, but you still you still found it uh, appropriate to include at the end of that. It says the tribesmen wave their knobs about when they've had enough of having visitors. That's what's what it said in the paper. That's what happens. They're quite happy. What paper is this that you're reading? It was it was in it was in like a paper a couple of days ago. It said um, they don't mind having visitors if they're bringing them coconuts and stuff that they can eat. Once they've got everything they need. You start waving the tackle about, and that means, like, right, leave now. Which you would, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, at a dinner party. Uh, uh, my grandfather used to do that. <laughs>
Oh, chimpanzee, that is raining down. What? Uh, that's the jingle there for Carl's Diary. Still a very popular feature on show one slash thirteen. Uh, here we are. Got a book sent to me called Freaks. It's a bit heavy, but it's got some interesting pictures in it. Read a bit about the two-headed nightingale. She slash they was on tour in London years and years ago. It cost two shillings to have a front row seat. She slash they had two heads slash two arms and four legs. They are called Siamese twins because the first twins that were born stuck together were Siamese. On one of the pictures, they are playing chess against the doctor. That hardly seems fair. <laughs> two heads are better than one. <laughs> so it's two heads, two arms, and four legs. That's just two women in one dress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's two women with an arm missing. <laughs> yeah. Spoke to Ricky and his friend Glyn about art. I just don't get it. Ricky had some odd pictures on his walls. I don't have any pictures up in my flat because of the mirrored wall. <laughs> but I can't say I'm bothered. The mirrored wall, we should just explain what that is. When you moved into your flat, there was an enormous mirror on one wall, was that right? We just got this flat and, uh, you know, it's not a big flat, so I think the people who had it before us, he, he was a gay fella, right, which was a bit like, oh, so you've been doing with that mirror and that. But- <laughs> that, that was, <laughs> What? No, just, you so, know. Just, what? What? what has he been doing with the mirror? Well, what's just doing, why, 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 no, what? it's just because they're quite sort of experimental in it, aren't they? And I don't know. What do you mean? What do they do? Well, I wouldn't know anything about it, but go on. No, what do you want? What? No, I, I don't. Experimental what do in mean? what way? What do you mean experimental? I just mean, you know, they'd be doing stuff. What? what? Of whatever they do. Chemistry. What? They have a chemistry set out. They'd be doing experiments. What? No, just doing what? Singing I am what I am and just checking out their, no, each their dance moves. Own. I'm not having a go at anyone, but what? I'm just saying, like, they're doing what they're doing, uh, which Carl, is annoying as well. No, I'm not. I'm not. This is what, why, well, but, what, why are you worried about what a little gay fella was doing in your flat before you got it in the front of a mirror? I wasn't worried about it. Why I mean, are you thinking about what he's doing? Why are you fantasizing what a little gay fella was doing in front of your mirror in your- I'm not, I'm not bothered. I'm just telling you what, why it was a bit odd that he had a mirror in there, right? But forget the, the history. But you've got a mirror in there now, haven't you? No, because what I did was, I try. I was gonna take it down and I thought, oh, it's a bit dangerous. This, mm. you know, it could crack and- Cause it's the size of the whole wall, isn't it? It, it took up a whole wall. Right. right, so like when he's moving about everywhere, he's got a good view of it and that. But he's got this full wall of mirror, and I thought I can't set that down. <laughs> and uh, I thought, what what can I do? So I've just put wallpaper on it. Brilliant. And it looks all right. You you wouldn't know, what have you? But it means that I can't put any pictures up. That's that's all. That's all I'm saying. Because if I put a nail in. And what don't you understand about art? What about art? Don't you understand the concept, specifics? Just, um, the way some people like, you know, the ones you've got, where it's just like a block of colour on a bit of canvas. It's like, what's, what's that? Just abstract. It's just abstract. It's, it's, you know, it's a vibrancy of colour. It's a, you know, an attack on the senses. Or it could be, there could be something in there that you might see. You might not see first time round, or it could be, you know. Yeah, but there's loads of stuff to look at without having to do that. But you've that's got windows. I can understand if you had a cell and there's no windows and you want a bit of colour. But you've got oh, a window yeah. to look out of and, and you've got like just a big block of But I was explaining this to you, that the, 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 the photograph where people before, um, you know, the art was photography, it was realistic, realistic and uh, you know, they had to make it look like the subject. But then when cameras came in, that's when people started yeah, doing I, surreal stuff. And I understand it, cause it, that. Otherwise yeah. there was no point to it, they had to find a new way to represent things that f uh, photography couldn't do as such. No, so I, I, that's, that's like when we, when we were in London having a shop around at Christmas and there was that picture of fruit for 700 quid. It's like, <laughs> well, just get some fruit, you know what I mean? You can get some real fruit for three quid. Yeah. I understand that, but there's nothing wrong with like having a, well, we'll get, don't, don't invent cameras then, one or the other. Do you know what I mean? That's <laughs> what annoys me. Someone invents something and then they go, we've got to invent something else. Like the abstract thing, why has someone gone, oh, I can't have paintings anymore because- What is it, a Dali? Going, melting clocks and stuff. No. I mean, the first one was all right when he did the first clock, but then all the time he's just like, oh, I'll draw something and it's got a melting clock on it. Mm. I'll do a sheep, put put one of them on it. Put, Have you seen his lobster telephone? That annoys me. Why? Because it's it's just, it's not it's not. I mean, what I think what annoyed me more with that is when he heard about how it happened. Um, he had some artist mate round, mm. right? And, um, I don't know what happened, uh, they, oh, were okay. they were eating- That's a hell of an anecdote. No, no, but they were eating, they were eating some yeah. food and what have you. Yeah. Lobsters? And, uh, yeah, they, they were eating lobster. Oh, right. And, uh- That's handy. I don't know, the other artist, whoever it was, sort Telephone. of- Telephone? Started saying, 
Oh, you and your clocks and all that, right? Brilliant. And, um, they this started, didn't happen. They yeah. started arguing. Yeah. And he chucked some of the lobster. Bollocks. And it, it landed it on the phone. It off his mate's head, <laughs> went on the phone, and they both looked at each other like, are you thinking what I'm thinking? And they, they, they brought out that phone as a bit of art. Things like that annoy me. Didn't because happen. it was then just messing about. That didn't happen. Just telling you what I know. I saw his, his work. Each to their own, if that's what he's doing. I'm just saying, I'm not putting my stamp of approval on it. Heaven <laughs> 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 forbid. Well, um, you know, as you mentioned in your diary, your favourite artist is Lowry. Because you can look at them for ages and see someone different every time you look at it. All I'm saying is, Art should be there to tell a story, not just to have a splash of colour. We know colours out there, there's loads of colour. We don't need to be reminded of it. <laughs> but colour's part of our evolution, and so it does something to us. Just Only like sounds, just like sounds. Yeah, but I'm saying, do a picture. Smells. Colour it in. Still use the colours, but mm. draw something with it, rather than just going, a bit of yellow, a bit of red. Like that one you've got, just red and black. What, what, what's that meant to do? Well, it does something. What? Well, I like it, I enjoy it, so it does right, something. Yeah, you, you have it then. I'm just saying, <laughs> I, I prefer it if it was something. And so, so you, and what, let me just get straight, you had a mirror on one wall, so you, you padded that wall. It's just And you of, padded the just, others. Uh, it's just sort of, uh, wallpaper on it. Right. Amazing. And there's no other art in there, not it's just an empty cell. Was Suzanne White like some art? Just like, uh, it's a, Suzanne's not allowed to watch telly unless it's a favourite thing, otherwise she's got to talk to me <laughs> about stuff. There's no art, there's no point, just wallpaper. I'm just saying, we've got three, three windows we can look out of. Right. Right? Stop looking at the walls, look out the window. <laughs> <laughs> Some new words have been introduced into the dictionary. Too many words. <laughs> we should have some system where we can get rid of words if they aren't used a certain number of times. Well, that, that we do. They do die out, don't they, eventually? Like what? You don't have to use them. No, but they don't, do they? They keep adding them. And I just worry about, uh, you know, th this is the problem with, like, your head can only hold so much. Can't it? Yeah. It all very well when Adam and Eve was knocking about. There's no history, they don't have to remember anything. <laughs> all I'm saying is, fine, bring out a new word, but once you bring out a new one, bin another one. The dictionary is getting bigger and bigger, no one's keeping an eye on it. <laughs> well, I think they are. They're not, they just, they keep adding. It doesn't grow. It, they don't just dig it up one day, so, it's got bigger. What have you done? So you're Left happy, it out. You're happy for them to stick in iPod, let's say. But you we know. can pride ourselves on having more words in the English language than any other language. I think we've got twice as many as the second. Yeah. Uh, I, I think maybe Russian. I'm not sure about that. Someone, I'm sure someone emails us, but... But we don't it's... talk the most, so there's a lot of clutter there. <laughs> what do you mean we don't talk the most? Well, you'd, you'd have to, you'd, you'd Nothing say Nothing as expressive as the English language. Yeah, no, because we've got a word for everything. I just, I'm, I'm just saying that's, that I don't use all these, all these words that are coming out. And I just think, like I say, keep an eye on it. Some sort of, I don't know how it can be controlled. But Shakespeare invented words. I think Shakespeare invented about 1200 words. Yeah, and we're probably still using a lot of his. So why yeah. do we keep sticking more in the pot? Right. Stop using loads of words. People are panicking in New York about the snow they're getting. It's two foot deep. They're saying it's to do with global warming. I don't get it. Two days ago they were saying the world's getting warmer and the ice is melting on one of the poles where the polar bears are. As long as we get snow on the world, does it matter where it goes? Read on the internet that heads are bigger now than they were years ago. Brains are getting bigger, apparently. This is because we're being told too much information. <laughs> we are Suck told too much swelling. stuff about things that we wouldn't have known about years ago. You've just made that leap, haven't you? Presume maybe br heads and brains are getting larger, but the fact that it's because there's too much information cramming in them. Where well, have you it got is, that from? As, as time goes on, isn't it? It's that thing of, um, we're being taught more and more every day. As the time goes on, something's happening every day. You've got to remember that. No, you haven't. You have. It's the same, like I said, you know, with the Adam and Eve thing. They didn't have that much to remember. They come on the world, they go, what happened yesterday? Oh, not, not much, uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, chimpanzee, that is written it down again! <laughs> yeah, this is where we read extracts from Carl's diary. Um, 
you, we've had to wrestle it from him. He's never happy, but you know that's the way it goes when you're doing a, what, you know a show as popular as this. And I'm going straight now to this entry. My man phoned and said that my Auntie Nora, ah, oh, classic Auntie Nora, wanted me to look on the internet to find out what the weather will be like in Spain at the end of November. I don't know where she gets her money from. Two months ago, she was asking me, Dad, how much it would be to get her back garden astroturfed because <laughs> she's sick and tired of the grass getting out of her. What does she want to do? Start a football team? <laughs> uh, what does she want a back garden astroturf? She likes the sort of green look, but she doesn't like the headache that comes with it, so she's just looking into getting that false grass put in there. Brilliant. Don't know how much it is. But. Went round to Ricky's and had some chicken curry that Ricky's girlfriend Jane had made. Ricky and Jane were going on holiday for a few days and had arranged for Glyn to come in and make sure the cat was okay while they were away. I'm sick of that cat. I was surprised that they hadn't paid for the little shit to go away with them <laughs> on first class. <laughs> Blimey, getting a bit vitriolic in the, uh, why diary. Doesn't he, uh, why doesn't he like the fact that I've got a cat and I, I love the cat? Why, why, it's why? It's just everything in that house that you've got gets sort of special treatment and it's a cat and it What do you mean you get me? special treatment? You, sometimes we put I, food I, down for it, and yeah. sometimes it gets uh, 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 on our lap and we stroke it. You don't what, just stroke it. We're you not massage it. it. You massage its back. You go, no, are you stressed out? Well, no, you no, it's out? good. It's, no, no, I'm not saying are you stressed out. At no point did I say are you stressed out. You <laughs> said, what the fuck are you doing for? Is it stressed out or something? I, 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 I like uh, touching my cat. To be honest with you, I don't like Ricky's cat. Oh, it, I can't believe it. Because it, every this. time I go around there, it goes straight for Magoolies. <laughs> yeah, instantly. You, yeah, he'd probably seen you in the sea and thought, <laughs> well, if he's waving it about, I'll have a bit of that. But it's like the lizard thing you've got. It's kind of, it's just sat there. You've bought it a big box, right, to be in. Right. One, one it's one. a salamander, right. so it's an amphibian. Yeah. It's not a box. It's a big vivarium. Yeah. But what I'm saying. And is as it for, uh, and, and and if you're going to criticise someone for just sitting there uh, having a round head and doing nothing with its life, uh, people who live in glass houses, no, we've done this one. Do you know? Do you know what gets me though, right, Steve? When I was there, I was looking at it and I thought, is it dead? Right? Because he's just sat there. Like, <laughs> and then it was thinking exactly the same <laughs> fucking thing. Sat there, not moving. Right. And then on the top of the box is like a box full of crickets and stuff. <laughs> That's it. It's, it's, it's food. Yeah. Right? But they were more active than the thing that it was gonna feed. <laughs> Get rid of the lizards, <laughs> keep them in there. More entertaining. <laughs> Don't understand it. A few months back, a girl who was having a kid showed me one of them scans of the kid that was in her. That's science gone mad, innit? I couldn't think of anything nice to say as it looked like a frog. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know why we've got to that point? What? Why? Why have we got to see something that that young? Why? Because people can keep an eye on the progress of the baby in the womb. Yeah, but why are they printing it out and stuff? That's some, surely that's for a doctor to see. Well, that's just an added bonus for people who are interested in such things. That's like saying, why do you take pictures of anything? No, because normally pictures are like you know you on, in Brazil sat in the sea or whatever. You'd go, oh yeah, I remember that day? It was a good day or whatever. But it wasn't. It's just kind of like, why have you got to see something? Is, you might as well. Well, you just, you just to listen. Why have you got to see something that small? So why would you take a picture of Steve in the sea? No, but what what <laughs> I mean is, why? At what point are we going to stop? Are we going to start sort of X-raying the fella's testicles and saying, well, there it is at a really young age? <laughs> Well, <laughs> where, where, where are we gonna stop? It's because, it's just horses for courses, isn't it? Some people like to have a record of their baby in the womb. They That's like right. to show their baby. They're excited they about it. They All sit right, down then. and they, they show the friends the, the slideshow. There that's the birth. Oh, that's the conception. Oh, look, Ron's going a bit mad there, isn't he? But why do I need to see this? This is what I'm saying. It was an awkward situation because she was happy with it. I was like, oh, God. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it was an odd looking thing. I couldn't say, oh, it looks like you. Because that would be a diss. <laughs> <laughs> oh Christ! Met Suzanne at Euston Station. I said I would sort out the tea tonight, so I called the curry house. The fella couldn't understand me. I asked for two poppadoms. He kept saying, how many? I kept saying two. He still couldn't understand. I said one more than one. He understood. <laughs> when we picked up the food and took it home, there were five poppadoms in the bag. There is a restaurant somewhere that sells knobs to eat. No, there's not. There is. No, there's not. No, there is. It says that women can't eat too many of them, and if you want a seal's knob for dinner, you have to book in advance. Right, it's gobbledygook. <laughs> this is the ramblings of a madman again. It's a trend, he writes. It won't last long. It'll be like hummus. <laughs>
But hummus, what, what, <coughs> when did that happen? What do you mean? It's still going. It's a Greek traditional food. I know, but there's one down the- there's a restaurant down the road that that's all they do. That isn't a proper meal. That's a side order, isn't it? That's like having a restaurant just flogging tomato ketchup. <laughs> hummus isn't a meal. They don't even try and kid you and get you in and flog you just hummus. They actually say it's hummus today. <laughs> Not gonna work. We shut down within a month. <laughs> Called Ricky and asked what the difference is between the mind and the brain. Yeah, he did. <laughs> That's a hell of a phone yeah, call. Yeah, unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. Ricky did explain, but I can't remember what he said. I wondered at what age you are when the mind kicks in. Okay. Ricky changed the subject and said there is an island called Spider Island. There's nothing but spiders on it. A bloke went to visit the island and said there was a thousand types of spider in one tree. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't tell you that. No, I locked it up after talking to you. Oh, right. Is that true? Um, yeah, they just said there's, there's loads of them. What, what do you think about that? What do you think of an island that's just full of spiders? It's a, it's a bit, it's a bit daft, isn't it? What do you think they should do then? Um, I don't know, because y you need spiders. I, I, I don't know what they do, but they say a world without spiders, like, wouldn't, wouldn't be good. Who says that? I don't know, someone. But, but they sort of do, they do something, there's something about if you did get rid of them all, it would have an effect. Well, of course it would. Any, get rid of anything, it would have an effect. Mm, not, not everything, though. <laughs> like I've said, you know, jellyfish and what have you. Well, it, no. The world wouldn't change. Well, it would. No, it wouldn't. Well, it would, because it's part of an ecosystem, so they're, 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 they're something's food, aren't they? No, but the, it's, it's 97% water or something. Yeah. So, how much are they doing? Just g give them another three percent, make them water. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, that's more useful. <laughs> give them another three percent and make them water. Oh, God. The rain, the rain ain't stopped. The old woman with the bent neck. Now, we've not heard about the old woman with the bent neck Who's before. The she's with a bent neck. Character. What's this? Incredible. She's, um, she's really old. And she's got a bent neck, yeah, but tell us something else. I don't know what's up with her, but I read sort of comes out of here. Look, look, it's radio. We can't- they can't see what it you're doing. It sort of comes out of a- of a chest. So from behind it looks like she hasn't got an head. <laughs> it's really weird, right? I mean, she's old and I don't know what's happened, just Suzanne said it's sad and her bones have sort of bent up or something, or maybe she carried something heavy when she was younger. On her head. And, you know, I, I don't know, it's sad and everything. Yeah. But she's just- she- she's wandering up and down the street, always looks fed up, but you can see her, you have to sort of bend down a little bit. Mm. But- I read just- I thought- I thought I told you about- She finds before. a lot of change. Yeah. I said, yeah. <laughs> well, as you write in the diary, the old woman with the bent neck is struggling in the weather. The rain must be running down her back. Don't know why she went out in this weather. Me back's doing me head in today. It does this every time the weather turns a bit grim. Ever since I tried to kick me height. <laughs> oh, I remember that. We've heard this before. Kicked me height and landed on me arse. <laughs> was going to treat Suzanne to a trip to the pictures to see Breakback Mountain, but then remembered there is a programme on about Two-Headed Kid tonight. <laughs> <laughs> what Two-Headed Kid? It's just a Two-Headed Kid knocking about. <laughs> and I just, just <laughs> wanted to watch that. <laughs> what would you mean, a Two-Headed Kid? It was, something on, it was something on the telly. I only saw the beginning of it. I thought, oh, it seems a bit heavy, this. The programme about the kid with two heads was a bit sad. They never go into the good sides of these stories. I asked Suzanne what happens if they sit an exam. She said she didn't know. Oh, Jim Barty, that is only gone and written it down the little... That's the jingle for Carl's Diary, uh, excerpts of which we read each week. Get straight into it. A band from the conga have won the best newcomers in a Radio 3 competition. They use pots and pans for instruments. It says that the conga is a poor, sad place. So why do people do that happy dance at the end of parties called the conga? Right, one is the Congo. <laughs> There's no place called the Conga. <laughs> they come from a place called the Congo. <laughs> where, where, where do you come from? Uh, Okie Koki. <laughs> <laughs> it's a terrible place that we don't know whether we put our left leg in or our right leg in. Uh, sometimes we shake it all about. No, we're but, not sure if we should. But um, <laughs> <laughs> Conga. <laughs> Fucking hell, you're such a. <laughs> Went into the gadget shop today. It's full of stuff that we don't need. Gadget used to be a good word that made you think of James Bond with all his gadgets. The best thing I could find in the shop was a clock that ran on potatoes. <laughs> we are definitely going backwards. <laughs> I agree. Well, what's the- who cares about that? A, a, you know, a little electrical impulse, so what? Had a night out with old schoolmate. 
found out about more of the other lads I went to school with. One is living underground. <laughs> what do you mean living underground? Not like a mole. Do you yeah. mean he's got a basement or do you mean he digs a hole every night? My mate went to visit him and he said it's all, it had been raining really heavily and that. And it's all the rain's running in. What do you mean he went to visit him? He went down here. What's that? That's an hole in the ground. Yeah, come in. Come he, just, he just said, oh, come, come round and see us. And he's, he's living underground. What do you mean he's living he, he, underground? He wanted to be in the army but was turned away and that's the closest thing you can sort of... How is that like similar to the Oh, that's exactly the army. like the army, yeah, yeah, where they teach you trades and, uh, you know, engineering know. and he's, flying. He's happy, he's happy down there. He said it was really muddy and what have you. He said he won't be going back to visit him. What's yeah. he got down there? Just, just stuff, just like a sleeping bag, a lamp. He dug, he, he's dug himself a subterranean cave. Near my old infant school, they knocked it down because it was like a wreck. You'd, you'd be in the class and you could lean <laughs> on the wall. Yeah, and subsidence. And your would go through it and stuff. And um, they knocked it all down, and I think that's when he was at his most happy, this bloke. I believe this, though. I believe someone he went to school with now lives in a hole. <laughs> that doesn't <laughs> shock me. When the, the tales I've heard of horses in houses and big-headed kids with webbed hands and feet, uh, and, uh, you know, and him, um, I, I believe that someone he went to school with now lives in a hole. That isn't bizarre to me. That's to that's <laughs> You spent to far too long with him if that, now you're just happy to accept. I totally accept that. I, I'd be surprised if I walked round uh, where he lived that there weren't more people living in holes. <laughs> his dad wanted to throw his budgie on the fire. True. His budgie died, his dad said, let's throw it on the fire. I mean, his mum, what did your mum do when your budgie died? She just was worried about the other bird that was left, so she made it a bit of company by getting a rock, getting a feather off the dead budgie, sticking it on the rock, put, putting it in the cage. So, a, a man living in a hole <laughs> not is unusual. not that bizarre. Right, carry on. I read me science magazine. Some things I learnt from the science magazine. Number one, space is running out of space. We should stay out of the sea because shark attacks are up. Yeah. Probably four a year now. <laughs> <laughs> well, he just says here, we should just stop going in the sea. Yeah. There's no need for it. Exactly. Why is there no need for going in the sea? Just because there isn't now, is there? We've got loads of land. So it's just, <laughs> you know, one or the other. We walked out of the sea. This is what I mean about going backwards. Getting back in it again. <laughs> We came from the sea originally, now we're going back in it. Don't go in it. Unless you're in a boat. <laughs> <laughs> the rules! The rules! According <laughs> the to rule, Carl Pilkington! The rules of Carl Pilkington. Oh, God! Did the podcast and then went for a walk round Manchester Square. Years ago, a woman lived round there who had a head like a pig. She was known as the Pig Woman of Manchester Square. <laughs> that made me think if there were other pig-headed women knocking about London. Do you know what I mean? Why, why was she nicknamed that? Why not just... The pig-headed woman. That suggests to me like there was loads of pig-headed women and that's the one of Manchester Square. <laughs> right. Well, no, it was more to do with identifying her, not amongst other pig-headed women, but go, have you seen the pig woman of Manchester Square, i.e. go down there and see the pig woman is in Manchester Square. What happens if she's walked off from there though and you go, well, no, but I saw one on New Cavendish Street. <laughs> no, well, she'll, woman? she'll always come back if you rattle the feed. Watched <laughs> a film about Hitler. Didn't watch all of it as it was subtitled. Can't be doing with that. Ask Suzanne if cinemas are full of deaf people when they're showing subtitled films. She said, shh, I'm trying to watch it. I said, what do you mean, shh? It's subtitled, I can make as much noise as I want. Yeah. She's you, a lucky, lucky woman. <laughs> you must be a joy to watch a subtitled film. I mean, the concentration is, is, is up there already. I mean, I, it, it is hard to concentrate. It's not as easy as when you're hearing it, because, mm. you, you know, you, you read things, but, you know, it's possible. If you had a, a buffoon going, I'm just going to sit here and make as much noise as I want, what's the point of that? <laughs> yeah. What is the point of that? I mean, it's possible, but why do, do that in a cinema? Just walk into a subtitled film and go, right, everybody? Let's all do the conga. Well, yeah, or during during ballet. You know, I mean, ballet, they're just dancing. You don't need to listen to the words. Just have yeah. a conversation. We're having our bathroom done. The bathroom man was round at nine this morning. We weren't allowed to use the shower because it all had to be bone dry before we could use his waterproof filler. Not that waterproof, then. <laughs> <laughs> Went for a brew with Ricky. We talked about monkeys and how they are closer to humans than they are to apes and how bees will drink cider to get off their heads. Now and again, there is a bee that lets the drinking get in the way of the work, and other bees sting it to death. Blimey. Yeah, well, uh, uh, there are, there, there's bees, they love a drink, um, and, uh, they can, they can just, they, they will, uh, drink pure alcohol. They drink 100%, they drink ethanol. You know, I don't know why. They love getting off it and they fall down and they're drunk, right? A bee can take in the equivalent of like 20 litres of wine, right? But some bees, 
get uh, addicted in, in the same sort of percentage as human addiction, like 10% of bees, they can't get enough of it. They take uh, ethanol, they take cider apples and that. And then when they get back to the hive, they go in a bit pissed and they've got guard bees and they go, come on, we've all had a drink. Bankers. Yeah. They sort of are, right? And they push them away and push them away again. Then the next time they go, right, I've had enough. And they give it a good hiding. And uh, Carl couldn't get over this. I saw his face, but I, I knew that he was thinking of that bee with sort of like eyes rolling around his head, a little bit belligerent with his jacket on backwards. Yeah. You know, and the bouncer going, come on, come on, son, we've all had a laugh. Let's move away, <laughs> yeah. move away. You're not coming in, right? You're wearing trainers. Yeah, you know, you're wearing, you're wearing three pairs of trainers. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm sick of it, you know. But what I did find out, because I went, went home and went on the computer trying to find out about drunk bees knocking about, um, they're not actually meant to fly. It's only because they don't know. Fly. Well, no, but they're, they're, if, if they were told that you're not actually designed to fly, they, they wouldn't bother. No, th this is the, this is that thing that goes around that aerodynamically, on the, on the face of it, looking at the size of the wings and the, and the, and the body proportions and everything, that it, that it's a surprise that they can fly. Okay, it's not that no one's ever told them they can't, and as soon as someone tells me <laughs> not meant to fly, they all fall out of the sky, going, "Oh, what are we doing?" Like in a cartoon. <laughs> no, but uh, it's, it's something about the confidence in that. At the moment, nobody says. There's nothing to do with the confidence. There is no such thing as confidence in bees. A bee never loses its nerve. That's not why it drinks. Because what you're drinking for? I'm just not confident anymore. There's no point turn to the bottle. I can't go up there again. You're an idiot. Oh. Jim Pants is that. He's gone and written it down again. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, uh, the ever-changing jingle for Carl's Diary, excerpts of which we like to read each week. Suzanne said today it can be my day because she has been a bit of a pain with her illness and that. <laughs> <laughs> so she said I can do what I want today. We went for a walk around Green Park. Loads of tourists were about looking at the Queen's house. She was in because the flag was up. I wouldn't want to live there. Why wouldn't you want to live there? Just because it's right in the centre of town. It's just not in a good place, is it? It's got a roundabout side and that. Really mm. busy. It's pretty good. I went for a pee in the toilets. When I came out, a pigeon had shat on Suzanne's coat. She was in a bit of a mood about it. A bird shat on my ear once. I left it for about 10 to 15 minutes until I got home. I washed it off and in that 10 to 15 minutes it had corroded me ear. You know, he's had a lot of problem with ears. Um, he told me the other day, he, uh, he got up um, washed, had a bath, had some breakfast, went to the shops to get a newspaper and well, had a chat with a woman in the corner shop, got home, put her in around, looked in the mirror, he had a cotton bud sticking out of his ear. <laughs> he went, what annoyed me was she didn't say anything. Like it's her responsibility. Yeah. No, but she knows me well enough to sort of, you know, <laughs> go... You know you've got a cotton bud in your ear? No, she knows you well enough to go, Carl's got a cotton bud in his ear, I've seen worse. <sighs> when you when you've got a cotton bud in your ear, what interrupted I th I you? I think Suzanne called or my dad called or something, and then because I was running a little bit late because I've been talking to them, the ear bud was in, I just popped my coat on and went to the shop. Carl, you got a toothbrush in your mouth. Oh. <laughs> Walked through Covent Garden. There were five of them mimes knocking about. I don't understand why people take pictures of mimes. Everyone looks like a mime in a picture. <laughs> That's so true. That's really true. If the point is, point is they're staying still, if that's their skill, a picture won't tell that story. That's, that's absolutely true. <laughs> My dad took the cat to be put down today because it kept bumping into things since losing its sight. My mum said she's not going to get another one. She said the parrot is looking worried as it's seen the budgie and the cat go in the space of three months. <laughs> <laughs> Your mum said the parrot's looking worried. What's the what what, what happened to the cat then? It, it it gets into a lot of fights. It lost one eye, and uh, then it got into another fight and lost another. Oh and no! It was just walking around, bumping into stuff. The, I mean, the vet sort of said, "Oh, we can do stuff to keep it alive and all that," but it's a bit out of order, isn't it? Because it costs a fortune. They shouldn't tell you. But. Mum and dad can't afford to have eyes put on it and stuff. No, you, you can't put, have eyes put on a cat no, anyway. No, but they said, oh, we, we can do something here. We can have, have its eyes sorted out. But it... W um, I don't think you should be allowed cats. Why? Not the Pilkington family. Why not? Well, they, they have good dying. lives. Yeah, I know, but they have good lives whilst they're still knocking about. It's just that we get through them. <laughs> 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 it's a good job you're not going to have kids. Oh, God almighty. I can't believe it. The cat that kept throwing up. 
So his mum shaved it. Unbelievable. Dry wipe cat. A mate sent me a story on email about a bloke in China who has this weird illness that means he can't have his picture taken. <laughs> <laughs> that's not the- that's not the weird bit. If he tries, his body doesn't appear in the photo. Don't talk shit! He has had group pictures taken and everyone appeared apart from him. Don't talk shit! The That's story bollocks. had a picture next to it of a family photo and it said he was stood at the back but you couldn't see him. Right. He wasn't in the picture. He was in the picture. No, he wasn't in the picture. He's done loads of tests and stuff. No, on. there's- I haven't done loads of tests. This is bollocks. There's no way. This is scientifically possible. What's what? his want- yeah, now he's wanted. Just a white bit of paper up on the police wall. Have you seen this man? What man? If you see him, tell us. <laughs> You're talking shit. Suzanne watched the film You've Got Mail tonight for about the 14th time. I don't think you could properly fancy someone without seeing them, unless you're blind. I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's odd when blind people have affairs. Why is that odd? Just because most stuff is, is based on looks, isn't it? So you think once they've found someone, they're happy with them. Stick with them. But no, it's not true. I mean, most things are based on looks. What I mean is, when you first first like, like meet someone and that. Well, then initially it's only looks because yeah. you don't know them. So that's what I'm saying. But that's, so a, that's a ridiculous thing to say, isn't it? Well, no, it's just what I think. I'm not saying that that's like fact or anything. I'm just thinking, if you're blind, why mess about? You're still basing on it if it's only looks that yeah. you, people find. What? Yeah, I'm just saying. So why is a blind person messing about having an affair? Because I'm saying that. Presumably that blind person isn't basing anything on looks. I, I just, all right, I mean, maybe that's not, uh, I mean more like- Do you want me to cross it out? Shall I cross it out? Well, it's, 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 <laughs> it's, it's just the same way, I think I put how, you know, people, uh, I read something in a Sunday paper once with some bloke who was going out with some woman, uh, he ended up going out with a sister who was a twin. If you're gonna have a change, have a change. <laughs> Spoke to Ricky about trips to the moon. Oh. He was up for going just to see what the world looks like. I came up with the idea of a giant mirror on the moon that would reflect the world back. He had a few questions, but <laughs> but I had the answers. Yeah. He changed the subject, I won. Right. My first question was, how would you get it up there? He said, bit by bit. <laughs> That'd be a good mirror then, <laughs> wouldn't it? I said, how big would it be? He went, you'd still need a telescope. I said, how would you get it on the right side of the moon, always facing the right? He went, what? He went, does the moon move then? I went, yes. <laughs> and if we don't like the mirror on the moon, we can always wallpaper over it. <laughs> <laughs> it's Suzanne's birthday tomorrow, so I've got to get her something. I sometimes think it would be best if we didn't celebrate birthdays. I think people would live a bit longer if they didn't know how old they were. Age puts restrictions on things. She said something about wanting one of them posh badges to put on her coat. I will look for one later. I love the fact that around the time that you've got to buy Suzanne her birthday present, you think that birthday presents are a bad idea. Got up early, it's Suzanne's birthday, gave her the card, and present. She was well happy with her posh badge. She wore it to work. It's quite nice, quite nice to hear a moment where she was actually happy for once <laughs> in your company. They always say when you get someone a present, you should buy them something they wouldn't buy themselves. Daft rule. I want something I would buy myself if I had the money. When I was young, me auntie Nora got me a present I wouldn't buy myself. It was a t-shirt with her face on. <laughs> <laughs> Looked at what's been going on in the world. Someone has found some people who live in an old town somewhere where they are so old-fashioned they still walk on all fours. There is a picture of them and they use shoes on their hands. That's not old-fashioned. Why is that old-fashioned? That's some kind of regressive evolution. Yeah. Really old-fashioned. Yeah. But it's not true, is it? It is true. It's somewhere in, uh... Well, I believe there are- they have found a group of people that are living and walking around on all fours, yeah, but I but don't believe they're wearing shoes on their hands. And I don't believe it's- they haven't evolved <laughs> to standing <laughs> no. up. No, they just haven't seen other people walking on two feet. Don't talk shit all your life. That's all it's about, though, isn't it? You copy. When you're a baby, if you were stuck in a room, You'd wander about on all fours because that's that's the way. That's an easy way of getting about. So you only walk on two feet because you see everyone else doing it. Well, I don't believe that is the case because, as I understand it, some of the family are walking on two feet. So I don't know what the ins and outs of it are. I know there's a forthcoming documentary on the BBC, so maybe we should watch that and then we'll all know what's going on right. instead of just leaping to conclusions because you read half of it on the internet but and then skipped but, onto but something all else. All I'm saying is, though, you would wear shoes on your hands if you're roaming about like that. 
<laughs> so I mean, you just been, confessed it, there that you, 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 you leapt from fact to fiction, did you, in the space of I'm, one I'm, diary entry? It's just that I saw a little picture. And you assumed that they'd be wearing shoes on their feet? If they've got hands. shoes on their feet, they might as well have them on their hands, because their hands are doing the same as the feet. <laughs> If you're not going to wear them on your hands, don't put them on your feet then. I'm beginning to think some monkey news was bollocks. <laughs> uh, treated Suzanne to her tea, went and got her a curry from the shop opposite. While I waited for the food, I read a story in the Metro newspaper about an alien gang oh. that kept appearing in someone's garden. Christ. The bloke moved, but when he used to pass the house at night, he would still see the aliens knocking about, hiding underneath his old shed. There was other alien stuff, but I had to go as the food was ready. Brilliant. Yeah, it's a bit annoying, that. Yeah, load of bollocks again. Well, good. More, um, drivel from Carl's diary next week. Oh, chimpanzee, that he's running it down again, you fucking... <laughs> That's the jiggle for, uh, excerpts from Carl's diary. This is all, uh, legitimate stuff. Freaking and I have had no input in this. This is the first time we get to read it. Went and did some shopping for stuff as it was my turn. Suzanne moaned a bit because I forgot orange juice and bought some cheap toilet paper. She always buys the expensive toilet paper. I don't know why they make toilet paper with pretty patterns on it. <laughs> that made it into the diary. <laughs> uh, up and out at nine o'clock to go to the Cotswolds. Now, I think this was a gift for your girlfriend, wasn't it? For her yeah, birthday, it was a you birthday went to the Cotswolds. Yeah, so I just went for one night. We got the car and headed off. We stopped at a service station to get some breakfast. We had fried toast with an egg on it, one sausage and beans, twice. Cost us £13.85. They sell everything separate, so it seems cheap. At that price, we must have been charged for each bean. <laughs> we found the B&B, but they wouldn't let us in the room because we were early. We went for a walk. <laughs> there was not much around the B&B, so we had a quick walk around the car park. <laughs> and went back in. Happy birthday. <laughs> The room was now ready. It's an all right room. Free biscuits, so I ate them straight away. <laughs> <laughs> like a child. Like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> he runs in, jumps on the bed. <laughs> no, no. Oh, 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 oh. Get off the bed, not on the furniture. <laughs> the room overlooked the car park that we'd already been round. <laughs> <laughs> You're staring at that window. Remember when we went there? <laughs> We'd always have the car park. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. The room had posh coat hangers in the wardrobe with sponge on them. <laughs> <laughs> so I ate the sponge. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think they are needed. <laughs> we went and booked a table for Sunday dinner and went on another walk. There was a field that was there just for birds to live on. We couldn't see any, so we went to the pub. Headed back to where we were staying for our dinner, I had beef. It was nice enough, but there was a family of 13 behind us. I don't see the point in going out in large numbers. They annoyed me. One of the family asked for sorbet before his next course. He was only about 11. He thought he was it. <laughs> <laughs> I said to Suzanne, I've had enough and needed a kip. Watch Planet Earth on BBC One. They filmed a panda for four weeks and all it did was sit in its cave. It did nout. If I was Fiat, I wouldn't name one of my cars after them as it suggests it won't work or go very far. It'd be like bringing out a Ford Sloth. No one would buy it. <laughs> New Vauxhall Slug. <laughs> <laughs> oh. We had a look round the local village. There wasn't much to it. We did the usual thing and had a look round the church graveyard to see how old the dead people are. <laughs> so Su Suzanne's had a little time so far. She's gone to the Cotswolds. The room wasn't ready. She's seen the car park, an empty field, and they'll let's go and play how old the dead people are. Well, I like the fact that you mentioned we did the usual thing of having a look around the church graveyard. Do you make her do that's that every time you, you go do, away? I like nothing. the fact. I want to know what she did for two hours when you slept. Did she just look? Like, she went to a club and a well of a time. <laughs> no, she just looked out at the car park, just like memories. <laughs> but well, that's, that's what you do, though, isn't it? When you go to these places, there's nothing else unless you want fudge. <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> you know, you, you walk round the church graveyard. And, <laughs> And have a look. Like it's nothing. Fudge. We went home. It took three hours to drive back. People say they go to the country to see the wildlife. I saw rabbits, pheasants, and a fox on the way home. They were all dead in the road. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
talking, I was just intrigued to know because Rob from Britain on Trent has uh, sent this in and he wants to know that, because he's just started seeing someone and he wants to know what your advice, Carl, is on how to keep her happy. You know, he's just started a relationship with someone he wants to know what, what your advice would be to keep her happy because, you know, I mean, he won't have heard that you took Suzanne on that wonderful trip to the Cotswolds. So, what's your sort of, your advice really for someone who's perhaps just started a relationship? I don't... I, I mean, you've been with Suzanne for what, nine years? Ages. Mm. I don't think you should, um have to go out of your way to please them because then it's not the right person. Mm. I think you should just do what you want and then if they like it then they're the right ones for you. Mm. So don't don't go out of your way too much. I mean I got the posh badge for a birthday. Mm. Uh, that's once a year. Um rest of the time it's kind of like you know I I I like weird stuff. I like watching weird stuff and all that. Um now and again I won't make her watch it. I'll I'll tape it. <laughs> Advice. But sometimes <laughs> this is amazing advice. Sometimes you just say, "No, come on, the bloke with the two heads on. I want to watch it live." Uh, <laughs> so give and take is what you're saying there. That's all. It's, it's, it shouldn't be hard. As soon as it's hard, it's not right. So just uh, just go about your business. See if she joins in. Brilliant. Another quote for the book. Woke up to the Commonwealth Games on the radio. Now, what you're making of the Commonwealth Games? Is that something that interests you? Are you a sports fan? Um, I, I'm not really. I mean, Suzanne's, uh, sort of been getting up early, especially to watch it. Um, you know how I feel about a lot of it. Um, it just seems to be sort of wasted. If people are running fast, use it. Do you know what I mean? Rather than just trying to beat your own record or someone else's, do something where you do have to run. If you're a good swimmer, be a lifeguard. Don't be messing about going up and down. That's downloadable as a ringtone, and it's also the jingle for Carl's Diary, just reading excerpts of Carl's Diary. Went home and looked up Freud on the internet, didn't find him that interesting, so looked at some other philosophers instead. Socrates, Aristotle, why have you just listed some philosophers? Just to show that I'm learning. Well, that's not learning. That's just that's, learning their names. That's a list. You might as well write one to a hundred. <laughs> yeah, but if someone says, oh, what's your favourite philosopher? I'll go, hang on a minute, and I've got them written down. But what, uh, why are you <laughs> can't just Wait a minute, one. I'll go home, get my enormous diary out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get a wheelbarrow, bring in my workings, <laughs> and say one of the la names I've written down. And when they say, well, why do you like him? Yeah, why you, do you, you like, just why, run away. Well, I, I noticed you put, um, Socrates first. Why is he your favourite philosopher? You throw the diary at them and leg it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then you go on to say, it's weird how names have changed, but then there's no other point there. <laughs> just is, isn't it? When you think about, like, Socrates, I've never heard that on anyone who I know, <laughs> is what I mean. It's just, in a way... But you're not Greek, are you? But how did that go about back then? I mean, it, when, say if you were phoning someone up and they said, uh, I'm booking a table for two, they go, name, Socrates, did he ever go, cheers? Without going, can you spell that for me? But I don't know what else point you're making. <laughs> I'm just saying it's it's a name that's awkward. You're always going to have to go. Can you spell that for me? You go, and it's not just him. Look at all the other names that are on that list. But they're <laughs> from a different country and a different era. Yeah, I know. But the names I've been to Rome and stuff, and you sort of go well, ancient Rome. Just just <laughs> Rome. It hasn't changed, has it? Rome. So it can be ancient Rome or Rome in 2006. It's yeah. The same buildings. Oh, I used to love Nero going around in his Fiat Punto. <laughs> Lao Tzu from years ago came up with some good stuff. One, he know he who knows does not speak. He who speaks does not know. Not entirely true. To lead people, walk behind them. Yeah. And of course, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. Yeah, yeah. did that. Uh, his favourites. Maybe maybe this is why people are at the start line spectating at the Commonwealth Games. Well, I, no, it's just that I, I've never understood why in Olympics and stuff like that, if you're going to watch, don't stand around the start line, go to the end where you see the winner. But because of that saying, it actually makes sense, doesn't it? It's like, well, every step starts with a step or whatever. Say uh, again? Uh, every race, you know, you've got to start with a with with a step. Yeah. So, um, uh... Which is, to, who am I talking to now, you or your brain? 
Well, I was thinking about it a bit, so I think I was in control of it a bit more. So, and what have you come up with? Just, just, if you want to stay at the start line, do. <laughs> what does that mean? I'm just saying, if, if you're into ra- I'm not, I wouldn't watch a race, right? Okay. But is this you or your brain I'm talking to you now? This is me. Okay. I wouldn't watch- Are you using- are you gonna- are you, are you gonna bring the brain into it or is it- there's no- I don't just... know, let's just see what happens. <laughs> okay. But all I'm saying is- Right. If I was to watch a race- Yeah. I wouldn't hang about the start line cause- Well, I, you just I'm said you would. What, did I? Yeah, you said that that's the place to start cause every- every race starts with the start. <laughs> no, <laughs> but I wouldn't normally. <laughs> Right, I okay. won't watch any race. The brain definitely hasn't been used yet. No, is this you or your brain you're talking about now? It was... I'm just saying about me. If I was on holiday, yeah, and Suzanne said there's a race going on down the road, yeah, I'd go. Well, let's go. Keep going down the road and stand at the finish line. Okay, but, but now what have you thought? Lazoo, yeah, I'd say. Well, hang on a minute. Every s- race starts with a single step. Yeah. How many people are around the start line? Is there more room there? She goes, yeah, I'll go, let's go there then, it's less busy. Right, and what would you see there then? I'd see people starting the race, but I wouldn't be that impressed with them because I'd go, well, I don't know if any of these are any good. So would you start at the start or the end then? <laughs> I'd, I, if it was down to me, I, I'd just probably stay at the finish line. Okay, so you wouldn't want to see the first step then? So what not do you think really. of Lazoo now then? Uh, it's not what- but I wrote down three of his, that one isn't my favourite, that was the third. I preferred the leading people from behind. Okay, and what would you do to lead someone now then? Um, well if you're behind, you don't have to take responsibility, do you? You can go, well, well I didn't send you away, you went there. That's not really leading them, though, is it? Yeah, because I've made them think. I've gone, uh, they go, oh, I've just walked into a big hole. <laughs> I'd go, oh, should have been looking where you're going. <laughs> I haven't led them in that hole. But they've learnt a lesson, they won't go in a hole again. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the greatest <laughs> conversations I've ever been a part of. I mean, that was incredible. <laughs> Never mind Aristotle and Socrates. That was oh, incredible, what? that. Um, if someone's out there, could they make a transcript of that? Because I think that, you know, in a thousand years' time, that'd be amazing. That was incredible, Carl. And not once was the brain used. <laughs> Well, one thing Carl has been doing over the past few months is writing his diary. He's kept that up. Um, I don't know what he's had to write about. All he's been doing is looking at moths and ants and bees and going for walks. But I'm sure it's all in the diary. So, uh, let's have a look at that. Oh, I don't believe it. He's only gone and written it down. We went to the park and had a brew. Suzanne read the paper while I played with a ladybird. I mean, it's like a child, isn't it? It's like what a child is. <laughs> Suzanne went to paper while I played with the lady bird. <laughs> oh, his only friend is a beetle. It climbed up my arm. It struggled on me hairs. This is in detail, then. Yeah, 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 yeah. It kept stopping every now and then and was rubbing its head with its right arm. It did it about four times and always used its right arm. It rested for about five minutes, then flew off. Sunday. Had a bit of a to-do with Suzanne because she wanted a lion today. I ate this. Once you're awake, you should get up. I got up and put the radio on really loud. She eventually got up. I told her insects don't have lions, so we shouldn't. <laughs> Why are you obsessed I with mean, insects? You must be fucking unbearable to live with. <laughs> you must be a nightmare. No, I've just started, because I've watched insects a lot, I don't want to keep going on about them because we're a bit insect heavy. But at the end of the day... If we if we copied insects, we wouldn't go far wrong. I don't know what you mean though. One minute you're saying they're great, then the next minute you'll slag them off. Yeah, I'll slag some of them off if I don't know what they're doing. But because I've studied them a bit longer, I just think they, they do. You them haven't right. studied them. He, he thinks he's like Darwin. Yeah. But you just slagged them off again, don't you? Think that insects are doing stuff? They're not. It yeah, goes there, ants, then it goes back again. The ant was. The ant was messing about, but only that one. The others were carrying stuff. That's what I'm saying. The snidey ones in everything. In every everything in the world, you get a hierarchy. <laughs> oh, long words! Ooh. The bookshelf was dusty, so Suzanne asked me to dust it if I get a minute. I ended up looking at every book. <laughs> <laughs> Just the spine. Yeah. Just for a few seconds each. Yeah. Didn't open them. I looked in the dictionary to see if the word dictionary would be in the dictionary. I didn't think they would bother with it being on the front page but it was in the book as well. It's a good point though, isn't it? No, it's not a good point, because you didn't tell us anything. Dictionary is in the dictionary. Well, of course it is. Well, why? 
If if you go out of your spell dictionary, you look at the spine and you go, oh, there it is, D I C T. So what does what does dictionary mean? It's a book full of words, isn't it? That's what it means. All books are full of words, you idiot. How to spell them? And if you don't know, no, what it's it is... not how to spell them. All right, then. How we'll... do you look up something? No, 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 no. It's not a book full of words to spell. No, it's the meaning. Give us it's the, the definition of dictionary. Meaning. It's a book full of words. If you want to know what the meanings are, but if you didn't know, well, that, I'm sorry. What was that sentence? Yeah, but what I'm saying is, if you didn't know that, then you wouldn't be looking in it because you wouldn't know the book is about that. So, if you don't know the word dictionary and what it means, you wouldn't be looking at the dictionary. You'd be looking at an A to Z. <laughs> because you Why leave it out though? Just because there's so many words in the world, I, I would have thought they wanted to cram as much as they can on a page. And if dictionary is already on the front, is that why you suddenly used the word hierarchy for the first time ever? Did you find that in there? Did you look? At, did you see hierarchy in the dictionary? I feel I that, 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 that big wasn't. word has pushed out about 26 <laughs> other more useful ones. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, Suzanne's been going on about me learning another language, but I sort of think your brain has only got so much room. On it. And the rest of it's filled with lard. So, <laughs> if I've got to learn everything I know, again, but in a different language, it's taking up space, isn't it? You don't learn everything, oh, God. It's all, it's all storage, mean? isn't it? But you if don't I, have to learn it again, you don't have to learn the concepts again. You're merely you learning vocabulary. Do you know how many moves there are in the human brain? You really, you don't worry, you won't use them all up. I feel that he has reached his capacity, though. Yeah. Well, you need a, another sort of... You, you need an update. You need some more memory. Woke up to some interesting news. It's good when this happens, because it sets me up for the day ahead. If it's miserable news, it affects my day. It said on the news that they have found two new flies. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, more insects! What have you done? Is that all you've done this summer? Bong. <laughs> trouble in the Middle East. Bong. Two new flies found. Ladybird climbs up arm. <laughs> they were found in the UK <laughs> and they were found close to each other. Maybe this happened because they were different than the other flies and weren't expected to hang about together, so that's why they knocked about with each other. That would happen, wouldn't it? What do you mean? It's two new flies. <laughs> what do you mean? Does it mean there are two new flies that are a different species? species? Yeah, two new species and they found them close to each other, right? Yeah, and but they, they didn't mean there was one of each. No. Yeah, yeah, they did. They found two different ones. No. No, they have. Seriously, I know that. That's right. That's a fact. So you've got, like, I don't know the names of them. They give them odd names, don't they? Well, say <laughs> yeah. you call it A and Fly B, right? Yeah. Fly A, I don't know, uh, was to say that's orange. <laughs> this is just... B. Fly B, yeah. No, this is but, painful. No, but this I'm is just painful. making it easier but for Fly B wears okay. a little hat. It's yeah, a little hat. Right, yeah, fine. Now, they found the orange one. I went, look at this over here. Which is a bit weird. And they've gone, oh, that's a new species. Log it, whatever. Mm. And then the other one went, oh, 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 keep your pen handy. Look at this one, it's got a hat on. So then they, they found them both within the same distance. I don't know what that sentence means. Keep going, keep going, keep going. They, no, found, let him both, and finish. they I, found them both within the same both, distance. But without <laughs> interrupting him, <laughs> let him finish this, no, this point. Let me just make one thing clear. Carl Pilkin just said, they found them both within the same distance. Think of that! Don't know what it means, but go on, let him finish this, this point. So, so what I mean is, they weren't knocking about with other normal houseflies, because they were probably sort of going, oh, he's a bit weird. Leave it. <laughs> Yet, because the other one was also odd, they're, not, they're hanging about with each other. Don't you understand that? Why is that such an odd concept? Because <laughs> you think, you think of it as like, two little... Um, uh, new kids in school. Yeah. They, they find out they're both new and they, they've got so many. Yeah, they're, both, they're both goths. So yeah, they yeah, yeah. Mm. And this was on the news, was it? Yeah, just on the radio, yeah. I know if I looked into that story, it would be 90% wrong. Bit tired today because didn't get to sleep as early as I wanted due to a moth getting in the bedroom. Fuck <laughs> me! I got it in a glass and looked at it for a bit and then let it go because Suzanne wanted to go to sleep. Looked up some interesting news. Some people dug up an old body in Ireland. Turns out it's well old and was here when dinosaurs were here. The really weird bit is it had hair gel in its hair. Right, what is it? A fella. Well, no, it wasn't around when dinosaurs were here then. Just a bit after. Right, fine. A lot after, yeah, go on. It's I think any hominid, anything that could even be linked to... Anything that may become man is only about a million years old, and I think Homo sapiens is probably only about 
150,000 years old. Dinosaurs are about 150 million to, to 250 million. Yeah, yeah, no, it's not the age bit. That's amazing. It's the fact of there's a fella, born have even had shoes on his feet. Right. And yet he was worried about his hairstyle. Right, well, that's definitely not true either. This is unbelievable. Well, there was a man on the radio doing poetry, says Carl in his diary. I thought I'd have a go at doing a poem about today. <clears throat> not really. He had, Steve, I'm, I'm a little bit queasy. He hasn't really written a poem. He's written a, a small poem. No, he hasn't really. Yes. If moths had eyes... <laughs> Fuck me! <laughs> let, let me read the poem, OK? <laughs> You wouldn't interrupt T.S. Eliot. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. <sighs> okay. If moths had eyes, would they be happier? How do they know they're not dead? <laughs> Cavemen hunting for food, but not before they style the hair on their head. <laughs> what would last longer in dinosaur times? A blind man didn't stand a chance. Not with all them rocks about. I'd rather be a blind moth. Hey, <laughs> it may be the greatest poem no, ever written. Just, just you know, dissecting it briefly, you attempt to rhyme in the first four lines, but abandon the rhyming system in the last three. Is there a creative decision have, for that? Can we have Carl read that? By Sorry, means, yes. just, uh, no, just, just you read it as you would like to... So this is... Uh, Imagine this, right? Okay. This is going out all over the world, this this podcast. And now, um, Carl Pilgrim, a new poet from Manchester, now living in uh, London, England, would like to read a, a poem. If moths had eyes, would they be happier? <laughs> How do they know they're not dead? Cavemen hunting for food, but not before they style the air on their head. <sighs> what would last longer in dinosaur times? A blind man didn't stand a chance. Not with all them rocks about. I'd rather be a blind moth. <laughs> he said it as though the last bit was going to rhyme. He said it like it was going to rhyme. Oh, God. No, I it's think, amazing. I think, it's I, amazing. I, I, think he feels, I think he feels as though the final line, I'd rather be a blind moth, is going to be one of those great... You know, it's, it's a summation that somehow the moth is a metaphor. I'd the caveman. Be a blind moth. No, but there's no I'm metaphor doing, in that. He really does mean he'd, he'd rather, rather be a blind, blind moth. moth. Yeah, well, I'm just because I've looked up the day's news. Can we always do that, Carl? Can we always find a day, right, and always sum it up in, in your in thoughts a poem. a poem, just like that? I love that structure. I I love that structure. If there's any um, English students uh, or professors um, or novelists or poets listening, um, please email us what I thought of that poem, why it's good, why it's bad. So, you know, give us your thoughts uh, on that. I mean, we would love expert opinion, um, poets, um, English professors. Uh, just email us at, at podcast at rickygervais.com. Mm. Oh, he's only got it really down there. That's the jingle for Carl's Diary. We had bacon and egg on toast. I'm eager to get through the brown sauce, as the bottle is too big to go in any cupboard, so it has to be left on the sideboard. <laughs> so I had about four dollops of the stuff. I love that, because, you know, that made it into the diary. He's concerned about the fact that brown sauce no, is the, too the big, so he's rushing through it. I know, but I'm just saying the kitchen isn't that big, and it looks messy when you leave stuff out, doesn't it? And we've got this giant brown sauce bottle, <laughs> and I don't want to chuck it away, because that'd be a waste. So you're having brown sauce and everything, oh, your cornflakes, yeah. in your tea. Yeah. A wasp got in the flat. You know trouble's brewing. <laughs> it was massive. The biggest wasp ever. Suzanne asked me to get it out, but I wanted to take a picture of it first. <laughs> I was getting my phone ready when it flew at me. I reckon the sting on it could have killed a kitten. <laughs> <laughs> so specific. It ended up flying out the window on its own. <laughs> Drama over it. Oh, God. We went out for tea. You're always in a calf. That's what you, this diary. You're all, you spend so much time in a cafe. There were loads of flying ants. I kept kicking the table because I could feel them on my legs. I wouldn't be that jumpy normally, but I still had flashbacks of the giant wasp from the morning. <laughs> Suzanne told me to stop being stupid because I was ruining a night out. A night out in a calf. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, what, what, God. Was her, what was it, her birthday? And flashbacks from an incident. Yeah. Like he's some sort of like war veteran. <laughs> what is it? It's the wasp. It could have killed a kitten. 
bought some wallpaper. We got back and got on with it. The wall that we've papered before has got a big mirror under it. We papered on top of it again. I ended up reading my phrase book while Suzanne did the rest of the tidying up. Now, what's your phrase book? I don't, this is, this is just you trying to master English, is it? It's just a book that tells you little sayings and how they came about. An interesting phrase is pot luck. It came about when all people ate is stews. They used to chuck all sorts of stuff into the stew. You stuck your spoon in and sometimes you got something nice like beef or you could end up with a bit of frog. It's pot luck. <laughs> Good time, eh? That's what it said in the book, did it? <laughs> a bit of frog. Got up and checked the wallpaper out. There are loads of air bumps and it's buckled <laughs> on the joins. I wish we'd never done it. <laughs> Suzanne said the washer was broke and it's out of his warranty. She called up the people who made it and they said it will cost £150 to fix. I don't know how they know that when they haven't even seen it. I want to smash it to bits and see what they can do for £150. <laughs> 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 so much anger. <laughs> I want to smash it to bits. That'd be great, wouldn't it? 150, you sure? Yeah, Come yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's just like a cube that's been through yeah. one of those car crushers. Yeah. 150 quid, there's 150 quid, fix it. <laughs> I watched the news and calmed down a bit because there was a story about some Siamese twins who are having an operation. They've got two heads, four arms, two legs, one liver. The doctor said they will have one leg each. I felt bad worrying about the washer when people have bigger problems like the Siamese twins. Ricky and Steve asked me to do a poem about one day a week, so I thought I'd w do one today. I can't obviously do it justice, so I should let the master read it. You've done another poem? Yeah, you said, you know, just just do one. If you have a day where you've had a lot of emotions... Well, I, I loved the poem, and so did uh, the listeners, and I knew they would, so if you can do that every week, that would be a joy well, you for can't, me. You can't force a poem, though. No, I so know. So a diary's easy to do, because you just write down yeah. what you're doing. But yeah. you, you've got to have some really meaty subject matter to be able to write a poem, Rick, as you'll discover. I know. Right, so, you know, you've heard what problems I had that day. Go on then. Bubbled wallpaper. What a mess. <clears throat> Washer dry and knackered. What a mess. Siamese twins separated. One leg less. <laughs> I don't know what rhyming scheme that is again. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, <laughs> God. Oh. <laughs> oh, fuck me. Oh, he's only going really down. I don't know. That jingle, of course, signifies another reading from Carl Pilkington's diary. There was an animal in the paper today that I've never before seen. It's called an alpaca. They are gormless looking. The fellow who breeds them said they are easy to look after because they're used to harsh conditions because they normally live in the mountains. The problem with this is they will turn useless eventually and then if we tried to bung it back on the Andes, they won't like it. It's like how people win these live like a star for a week competitions. They're not good for anyone. <laughs> okay. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> If something's living somewhere... And he's not going to send them back to the back? Andes. He's presumably breeding them for something else. Yeah, but say if eventually, you know, the world's getting busy, there's hardly any room, and we go, right, what can we shift here? What's getting in our way that we can shift? <laughs> well, those funny-looking things came from the Andes. Bung them back. All right, then let's put them back. And they go, oh, they don't like it. They're not surviving. They're dying out. Why did we bring them here? Oh, it was closer. Yeah, but look, we've died out now of the... Sorry, this is not this happening is with yourself. Not no, this, this isn't happening. They're, they're angry about it, like it just happened and you're sick of it. None of this has happened no, yet. I'm just looking at how it will happen. <laughs> Leave them where they were. <laughs> but you're, like... you're getting angry about things that you're speculating on now. It's absurd, Carl. Not once have I read here about your anger about, about terrorism or international, you know, political injustice. Not once have you written about that. <laughs> Only about the fact we may send animals back to the Andes. I know, but just because it, it just annoyed me, that's all. They brought them here. Some fellas getting a load of praise because they brought this weird animal into the country. And yet, it's like, well, they were, they were on the Andes for a reason. Leave them there. It was happier there. I, I mean, I feel guilty when I open a bag and a fly flies out of it and I think, where's that come from? What bag are you opening with ba flies? Uh, what bag? No, just when, like, you know, the bag I took the computer home in, a fly flew out of it and I thought, when did that get in that bag? Where have I brought that from? And it's the same thing. It doesn't want to be somewhere else. It was where it was. 
And that's the same with this Palaco or whatever. <laughs> It's amazing! It really is the ramblings of a madman, isn't it? Some new sea thing has been found. <laughs> <laughs> There's no headlines on the news. It wasn't found by sea experts, it was found on eBay. Someone was selling it for a fiver. I don't see the point in buying something that you don't know what it is. What do you I... mean? What do you mean? It was... It was. Someone's found some sort of shell with a thing living in it. Right. Um... They thought, oh, I've never seen one of these before. I can flog it on eBay. Someone bought it and then wanted to look after it, went to some sea expert, and they said, oh, I don't know what that is. That's 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 the story. It's just weird how stuff's being found on eBay. No, it wasn't found on eBay, though, was it? Yeah, but that's where the specialist people sort of picked up on it. It's just weird that... I mean, all, all I was saying is I wouldn't want one. If you don't know how to... If it's a new creature, you don't know what, what makes it happy. <laughs> when you get a kitten... You go, stroke its head, loves it, right? And you can do that knowing that it's liking it. <laughs> if I had a little seashell and you go, does it sit in water? I don't know. <laughs> do you know what I mean? You could end up doing more damage. So that's why I wouldn't want it. It's nice to have rules, in it? It's nice to know what you're doing with something. Well, as you write in the diary, it's like if an alien landed and wanted to live oh. with you. <laughs> as much fun as it might sound, it wouldn't be long before you got annoyed with it because it wouldn't eat the food you gave it. That's what I'm saying, but I couldn't have a go at it because he might not like pasta. <laughs> it might not. <laughs> Everyone likes pasta. Oh, Chip, after that, he's gone and written it down, the little... The jingle that signifies another reading from Carl Pilkington's diary. Got up and put the radio on. I listened to the story that the vicar read on Radio 2. Yeah, that could be good. He was saying how Jesus was 33 when he when he died. He said he was more into the idea of doing a lot in your life than living for ages. This was linked to the news about the doctor who's come up with some stuff that he's been injecting himself and his wife with that makes you age better. I looked it up on the internet. It wasn't worth them doing it because they are already old looking. I don't know why people want to stay looking young. You can wear a bald head better if you're old, because hairs are replaced by wrinkles. It's drivel. No, it's, it's not drivel. It's pointless. Just... A pointless entry to a diary, that. It's not, because that could be, a, a, a like, an important bit in, like, world history. What? The fact that, that people, that someone's trying to make people not age. Age is good, isn't it? When you see an old person... They've been going forever. What has? People trying to age better. No, but he's talking about, if you're 90... He wants people to look like they're 30. And that's not good, because... How, how would the world run when that's going on? Well, I agree. But you know, it's, when people, again, it's not a revelation. If I... If, if I like chatting to old people, because they know a lot of stuff. So if I'm sat on a train and someone's old, I'm happier talking to them about... They get up and move after about ten minutes. Well, no, you know, the fact that many of them are infirm and can. <laughs> yeah, they, they have to stay there and listen to but, this one. But, yeah, even that, even that means that they're getting more out of life in a way because they don't move about as much, so they have more thinking time. It is weird how that happens to you as you get closer to death. Jesus. You know, you're not working as much because you're resting and you can think back about your life and you can think, oh, I had a good one. Actually, it's not been that bad. Whereas if... But you must have started that now. Because you've been doing nothing for the past three months. Yeah, but I'm just, well, like I'm saying, it is a good thing for you to do to sort of think about what you've been doing with your days and your weeks. And, and how stuff. do you assess your life so far? With all this spare time you've had in your hands and moping around and moaning about your illness and just sitting around, right? You've been uh, introspecting, have you? Yeah. Go on then. What have you come up with? I haven't come up with anything. I'm just, uh, <clears throat> I'm, I'm just, you know, I have, I have an all right life and things are changing. Oh. <sighs> Keep saying that. No, but they, but you don't know how much they are changing to the point of I don't know if I mentioned the squirrel eating Mars bars, but from that <laughs> from 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 that happening to monkeys opening bottles with lids on them to it's just it's it's mental out there. It's madness what is going on, and all I'm saying is old people need to be old people. You need oldness. You need to see old people. You need to go right. They might have a solution. They've been on the earth longer. Quick, we need an answer. How old are you? I'm 32. Well, you look 78. <laughs> I don't know what you're saying! I don't know who that conversation...
conversation was with why you got angry and I think you made the opposite point that you were making yeah. at the beginning. If you, you say you're 32, you look 78. No, you were saying about it would be a problem if you were 78 and looked 32. Well, I don't know what you're saying. You came down on the wrong side then. Either. You did that whole thing and you bollocksed it up again in your brain. I'm just saying either way, you need to have people who look old. Otherwise, who's in charge? <laughs> I don't know what you mean. Right. So you say, even if, so you're saying it'd be alright to make 78 year olds look 32 as long as there were some 32 year olds that look 78, as long as you've got old looking people. No, but say Can like, I tear this page out? <laughs> what? Because it's worthless. What I mean is, when I went to the doctors, oh. I saw the specialist, right, mm. about the kidney stones. I was, I was asking him all the straight questions. Go on. Is it life threatening? No. Uh, you know, how long am I going to be out? Couple all the rest of, days. of it. Right? Now, he As it turned out, it is life-threatening, and you've been out for three months whinging about the fucking thing. Strange. Now, he was quite old. He looked about <sighs> 55. And that reassured me, in a way. In a way, it didn't, because he's, he's one of them doctors who didn't open his eyes much, and I kind of thought, I hope you open them I don't know what wider. you're talking about. What do you mean? What? What do you mean he didn't open his eyes much? One of those sort of doctors who's either that overworked, that is, he, he does that, you know, when he's like, he's tired, so he's going, right, what we're going to do is, and he's doing that with his eyes shut, he's well, talking this is, like that. this is radio. I know, but I'm telling you, so you can see. But the people are meant to be listening to this. But if they can't imagine me with my eyes shut. Well, tell them you got your eyes shut. Just right, say yeah. he had his eyes shut. Yeah, he had his eyes shut. Oh. Had he been reading this? <laughs> <laughs> Bored stupid, I imagine. He's just trying to get a... Oh. Do, do you know what I mean? I, or, I don't know if it's because he's tired or if he's that educated that some people know so much you don't even have to look at it. <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about! Intelligent people! Who is so educated that they don't need to open their eyes? Well, you see it, you see like... <laughs> what is that? Uh, who's that bloke of those? Is he blind? No, he's been reading too much. <laughs> He no. doesn't open his eyes anymore, doesn't no. he? No. Old, old people who you see wearing tweed and what have you, and they're really posh and they talk, and whenever they talk, their eyes are shut and they I open... I don't know what this observation is. I don't understand why you've never seen that. I've never seen an old, educated man wearing tweed who doesn't bother opening his fucking eyes. Steve, I don't you... know what you're talking about. But Steve, have you seen... Do you know what I mean when people don't sort of open their eyes when they're not talking to you? And it can be quite annoying, because it's like they're saying, I'm not interested about you sat there, I'm not bothered if you're listening, or not. I'm saying what I'm saying because I say what I say. And it can be quite if, he, if he has got his eyes closed, he's probably just trying to absorb what you're saying and, and think carefully yeah, about probably. it, so anyway, he doesn't misdiagnose you. I'm, I'm not having a go at him. Well, I'm like just saying he was 50 odd, and I was happy that he was there telling me. <laughs> I don't know why you were watching his eyes when he was telling you about your insides. Because you can tell a lot by people's eyes. That's what I said about jellyfish. But you know, just lines in a face tell a few stories, and I don't think we should get rid of them lines. Brilliant. Wise words. You've mentioned him before, Steve, this Peeps fella. Yes. Has he done anything else apart from a diary? Because now I've done now I've done a book and a diary. That means you're better than Peeps, well, is what you're thinking, Well, I'm it? not going to say that until I know, but what else did he do? Well, Peeps wasn't a writer predominantly. I right. believe he was, uh, you know, like a bureaucrat or something. But he kept a diary, which has since become a historical landmark. And what did he say in it? What did he say in it? Well, it's again more because it's both well written and it's also an amazing insight into a social into document. A social as well. document, yeah, yeah. It's a social document. Of I mean, that yours period. is a social document, but it it sort of revolves around uh, having egg and chips in a cafe and seeing a ladybird, which you know. But that's that's today's living. That's well, his saying, yes, but his describes the Great Fire of London, which is what it's most. Yeah, it's but best we haven't had for. one of them. If we had one, I'd write it down. I'm only writing what's happening. The <laughs> ladybird happened, right? I wrote it down. He he was just lucky. He was about in London when that happened. So you're a little angered that you've not witnessed one of the great disasters. Um, because the thing is, if they read your diary, they'd think, well, nothing happened that year. Nothing important in the world happened that year. Because your diary doesn't just mention, I mean, okay, yes, it, does, it fails to mention any disasters in London because we haven't had any, but it doesn't mention any, it doesn't man mention any world events, it doesn't men mention wars in Iraq, but it, terrorism, it doesn't mention now. anything. But that's all being wrote about anyway. If you're saying there's a museum that's keeping everything, there's loads of other books on that. Who's looking at the fella whose skulls fell off? What? We see. It's interesting, isn't it? What do you mean the fella whose skulls fell off? Well, that's what happened the other week, so I wrote about what? it. What? A fella's skull has fell off. What do you mean, his skull has fell off? It's something to do with circulation. 
But what do you mean his skull fell well, off? Well, it's in the diary. We but how can a diary. skull fall off? Because it's surrounded by tissue and it's got a brain. How can just his skull, how can it, how can it detach itself from all the stuff surrounding it? He mislaid all his dreams. But, but, <laughs> but all I'm saying is, that's, <sighs> that's not getting a look in. No, because it's not significant or probably true. Good point, Steve. I don't all know All right, well, let me just, I'll just, I'll just consult the diary quickly and find the, uh, the moment with the man whose skull fell off. Oh, here we are, yeah. Looks like the world's fattest man is having an operation to get rid of some of the fat. Yeah. He has to have an iron bed because that's the only thing that can hold his weight. Yeah. There's also a man whose skull has fell out. He's in hospital somewhere. I hate that. It would make me panic. The hospital is busy with people coming in to look at their head. What are you talking about there? That tells us nothing. Right, it's impossible for a skull to fall out. It How are scholars in 10,000 years going to be... What are they going to decipher from that? They can sort of go There's not enough incident but, but, detail. But, but, but how did his skull fall out? Circulation problems. But th answer the question. How did his skull fall out? Fall out of what? He was at home, um, and I don't know if he was combing his hair or something, but it, it come off. What <laughs> did? His skull. What do you mean, his skull? Do you know what the skull is? It's a part of the head. Well, it, no, it's the, it's the structure of the head. It's the bone. Do you mean the top of the skull? This is only useful if you have all the salient facts. Then it would be of interest to us. We could, we could. Well, that, I, that, I couldn't take that on. I'm busy. I'm not going to start looking into stuff in depth. Just get the details. <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> you're such an idiot. You are the best. Oh, idiot in the world. Well, I don't want to be premature, but that entry is followed by, I injured my toe the other day by dropping the toaster. Instead of letting it hit the floor, I tried to catch it with my foot. <laughs> I didn't think I'd done any harm, but my nail looks like it could fall off. I might show it to the doctor when I get me kidney stones out. We could easily get by without nails on the feet. They are more trouble than they're worth. You're so wrong. You're so wrong. I think on the days when cavemen without shoes and animals need nails, I don't think we need them now. I honestly... Because you hear about uh, ingrowing toenails... Right, so that's a problem. Um, you've got to cut them. Um, stuff gets under there and gets infected. Get rid of them, you won't have any of that. As long as you wear shoes. No, you'd have unprotected toes and fingers, wouldn't you? I didn't say on the on the fingers, just on the toes. So why why do you need them on the fingers and not the toes? Because you, you, you use your hands to do stuff. I've said about toenail out, it'd be good to have it growing on the head. What? Just having like a sheet of it, just, just like a, a nail on the forehead. <laughs> you wouldn't look weird because we'd all have it. I'm not saying. What are you talking about now? I'm just saying we've. I, I don't want to go on about evolution stuff because we've done it all. What but, do you think the skull is for? No, but I mean on the outside, so that when you bang your head, it's a little bit more protection. Like like people. I mean, you're looking at me like that. Why do you wear a helmet on a bike then? <laughs> because. <laughs> Because the bike wasn't meant to be invented. We weren't meant to whiz along at 70 miles an hour with evolution. I know, but, you, but because life's changing, like you've said, let's but you can't the... you can't go. Let's evolve. Let's re-evolve. Okay, let's assume we've got this nail on our head uh, that's growing out of our forehead. So we look like one big thumb. Yeah. Uh, which weirdly, Carl, kind of. I mean, you can almost imagine it looking at Carl now. You could imagine a big nail there. Does the nail quite... continue to grow? Do we have to trim the head nail? Uh, yeah, in the same way you get a haircut. Why? Is that preferable in your mind to just wearing a crash helmet in instances where you might have something hit your head? Just because, um, for a start, helmets, you have to carry them around with you. That's one thing that's put me off having a motorbike. Whenever you see someone on a motorbike, mm -hmm. it's all like the clothes you've got to wear. And it's like a big upheaval, isn't it? It's, it's, you know, if you have a car, you can get in with your shorts on, your flip-flops on. A motorbike, it's like, it's yeah. like you're an astronaut or something, and you're only nipping down the road for some milk. Do you know what I mean? So, get rid, what I'm saying is get but rid But does it annoy you having to put shoes on every day and underpants and a, a vest and a, I don't know, No, but once they're jacket. on, I'm not carrying them. They're on me. If I had to then take the shorts off for whatever reason and walk around holding them, I'd go, oh, I can't be bothered. I don't like holding a bag. I don't mm. like bags. We carry too much around with us now. I don't like carrying stuff. It's just a, a hassle, isn't it? It's thing. just endless things he doesn't want to do, he doesn't like doing, he doesn't like carrying bags. I mean, Who the hell has a gripe about carrying bags? 
It's Why just, is that a concern? Because it's it's stuff that's on on. I you. love the way that he wouldn't mind having a nail going out of his <laughs> fucking head, but he doesn't <laughs> want to carry a bag. What's good with it is everybody's got one of these, and but it's it's not going to happen. Carl. And the most important thing in your body, apart from the heart, is your brain. So protect that, not the toes. The toes we can get by <laughs> Please, without the toes. People. But your head's important, isn't it? There's a lot of stuff in your head, um, and I know all this just after seeing the the body works thing. I went to see. The, uh, it's a show on where there's a load of like dead bodies and that, and uh, you can see how much stuff's in the body, and it's there's loads of stuff. There's nothing in there that you don't need. It's all doing stuff. Everything in your well, body. We've been but telling you, you that for years. But you reckon you don't need the toenails? Yeah, that's on the outside. I'm saying everything that's on the inside of your body, right? You don't need the appendix. No, but it, that, it doesn't that depend on what what lifestyle you have. Well, it's a, it's a hangover of when we uh, probably ate a lot more cellulose and it's... it's Yeah, well, they, it's, they might come back. Things are always coming back, aren't they? So if people start eating them again... What about male nipples? Uh, sort of looks all right, though, doesn't it? Because the chest is quite plain, so with, with nothing on it, you'd go, oh, what's this? <laughs> it just balances it out. I think it looks all right. I think it works. So <laughs> leave it. Um, but what were we talking about? But w- wouldn't you rather have um, maybe a little... Uh, like a rib cage around the testicles, because you get a whack in them and it. Oh. Um. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um. Not an invention, Carl. It's not an invention, and we can't do it. But. But will you be able to sit down still? Because that's the good thing with them at the moment is movement. <laughs> so it sort of works. But don't they say? Um, they said something about testicles, about the body works thing. Well, they're on the outside. Put yours away, Carl. (laughs) (laughs) You're not one of the exhibits. (laughs) Uh, They're on the outside because they have to be a few degrees below body temperature for the, I think, the Satoni cells to... to, to So that's that's an odd design that they had to go there because it is a daft... It's a bit of an odd place to have them. Where would you suggest? Dangling from the throat? Um, sort of... I want to redesign you, right? You, 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 You can... Possibly do this now. This is something you can actually do. Probably, you could probably have your testicles anywhere. So where would you want them? You've got a giant forehead nail. Yeah, you could have that. It probably wouldn't grow, but we could certainly have that. that I, I just mean like because uh, if if all it's about is temperature, you don't yeah. want to get them too hot. Yeah. Well, they're getting hot down there. Cause you're wearing pants, might have you? Mm. So have them nearer to the outside of the of the body. Well, they are near the outside of the body. No, but we wear pants over them. So you what? wear pants over them because they're, they're testicles and polite society suggests that you don't show your testicles. Yeah, well, testicles. that's the odd thing, isn't it? That's what's happened somehow, that we've, that we've said testicles shouldn't be seen. Well, then just cut a hole, cut a pair of hole in your trousers. If it's only about, you know, keeping them cool and because they're too hot, why don't you just uh, hang them out your shorts? Because there's too many sort of seats that are shared these days, isn't they? But what I'm saying is... Well, what are you saying? Where, well, where would, you, would you put them? Somewhere like, um... Sort of under the ears. So it sort of just looks like lobes. So oh. you would redesign your body to have a pair of testicles for hanging from your ears. And when people are sometimes talking, they do sort of mess with their ears and they're always saying check for lumps. More <laughs> handy. <laughs> Does the penis remain where it is at Leave the moment? Leave that where it is. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know about you, Rick, but I would love to see... Perhaps on the web, you know, it's very easy to put stuff on web pages now. Some kind of illustration it could be computer generated, it could be drawn by hand yeah. of the new model Carl. Bear in mind, people, that he's got some testicles underneath his ears and a big thumbnail on his forehead. Big thumbnail on his forehead. I'm um, talking to Carl. I want to see Carl's head everywhere. It's the roundness that I like. Okay, so do a viral campaign. Anyone out there? With a picture of Carl, just get it everywhere. Because I want eventually everyone to, as they walk past him in the street, to shout, you shaved monkey, or look at that bald head, or look at fucking coconut face coming this way. you got a head like a fucking orange. Oh, he's only gone and written it down. The little fucking car! I'm going to do it on my fucking car! That jingle, of course, signifying yet another reading from Carl Pilkington's diary. As always, packed with rich insight into the man's mind. Had a late night last night because I stayed up to watch a programme about monkeys. 
<laughs> it's already good. Of course it is. It's already good. Now, before I read on, I mean, is this not some kind of monkey news? Is this not a late return to monkey news? Uh, well, it's not. It's not that good. Is it not? Whereas the other monkey news is... Oh, chimpanzee, that's some more shit! This is what he says. He, this is what he'd glean from the programme about monkeys. It sat on a bridge and wanted stuff off people to walk over the bridge. What? So it was acting as some kind of toll booth, This is it? ridiculous. No, it was a bridge in, in, like, the jungle. Oh, shut the fuck up! And it's a monkey that sat on a bridge and, um, a lot of tourists go through the area... No, it's to, a monkey who realised that, that if he sits there, it gets stuff because it looked like it's a cute little chimp begging. No, but every time. Yeah, because you give a monkey, you give it. Oh, I'm as bad as him now. If you give a chimpanzee uh, a banana uh, and he starts realising that humans have things to give, yeah, but it's all squirrels sorts of learn stuff. that. If you don't go, oh, you wouldn't say, oh, went to the park. There's squirrels waiting at the gate. You have to give them a toll to go in. They're not there. You're going to give them a nuts. They come up to you every time. You, you fucking idiot. Went to bed after watching it and fell asleep thinking about it on the bridge right now. It's a bit bad, really, because the monkey should work harder for its food. It made me remember the slug I saw yesterday that was eating bird poo. <laughs> Nobody would ever help a slug with food like they do with ducks and monkeys. A slug's life is pretty bad. The only time they come out of their den is when it's raining. Den. So, so even their days out are depressing. <laughs> it is. Do you know what I mean? No. It is like, it's a horrible thing to be in it. <laughs> a slug. <laughs> Nothing talking about what is it like to be a slug. No, just because like the monkey, even though it's been quite aggressive, everyone was like, "Oh, give it some water." And it was it was well like kitted out. It had like you know chocolate bars, bottled water, some like you know fizzy stuff, and all that. An iPod. It was listening to monkey news. It could have had one if it wanted one. It was getting away with murder on that bridge, and that's just because it was furry. Yeah, if that was like a blob, like a slug, there's no way people would be that friendly towards it. And it just annoys me how you get this pecking order. For, like, no matter what creature you are, favouritism. And that slug was only eating that bird poo because it wasn't being offered stuff. If it was offered toffees or whatever. <laughs> well, it's just sad, isn't it? It's, it's come to that. That's where its life has come to. <laughs> yeah, but it's not a it mollusk like that's down it's... on its fucking yeah, luck. It didn't live in a big country house no, and his wife it left it, the I kids was, went and started was hitting the bottle. It and I kind of thought, and look, they do only come out in the rain and it's depressing and it'll probably get killed in a bit. And that was its last meal. I just... Last <laughs> meal! But it wouldn't care. prefer steak and chips, Carl. It no, doesn't have... It must like a leaf or a, a... You know, at the end of the day, it's an insect. They love it. It's leaf. not an insect! Well, it's part of that gang. It's part of that... <laughs> no, it's part it's of not. that... They hang out together. They it's hang out not. together. No, Why do you think it's part of that because gang? Because it, it knocks about in the woods in the same place as a spider does. But all I'm, uh, what I'm saying is they, they're eating boring stuff because that is what's... It's not boring area. stuff to them. They're not. I have no opinion of it at all. They take in sustenance. No, but where you are is what you eat. When I'm in London, I'll have beans on toast for lunch. On holiday, what? Tapas? Go on, I'll have a bit. <laughs> so it's whatever you eat, what's in that area. Suzanne went off to work and I went to the shop to buy some envelopes. The shop was empty, but the fellow behind the counter was on the phone and just kept talking, even though he could see I was waiting. I started to count backwards from 20. <laughs> When I got to six, he hung up and served me. I won't use the shop again. Question, why count backwards from 20? So he's thinking, what's going to happen at one? If I start counting from one, he's going, well, let him carry on. What, out loud? So not, not really loud, but like, uh, more of a mouth action, so he could see who was doing it. You know, like Sorry, that. you you just started miming counting backwards to a man in a shop. He's on the phone. The yes. shop is empty. Yes. I thought he'd like me custom. He could have served me and stay on the phone. Even though I don't like that, at least he's still doing what, what you know, he needs to do. I just said, sorry, can I just get these, please? Yeah. Well, I stood there and I thought, it's annoying me now, my kidney's aching and I started to get a bit of a sweat on. So I thought, right, I'm going to give him 20 seconds and if he hasn't got off the phone, I'm leaving. And when, he got to, when I got to about six, he, he served me. What's wrong with that? Again, you are giving one yourself... of the strangest people. It's just giving yourself a, a thing. I could have been stood there free. for ages. He's one of the strangest people who's free to walk yeah. it's the about, streets. No, I set myself a little target and I thought, I don't want to waste another 30 seconds in here, I'll give him 20. It worked. He served me at six. But it didn't work. Yeah, but did he do it because you were doing that or did he finish his phone call? I don't know, I was busy counting. <laughs> Looked at what's been going on in the world. There was a human head attached to a seagull's body in a jar. 
Is that all it says? This is the sort of weird stuff that goes on behind surgery doors. I doubt it ever flew because the head would have been too heavy. Well, of course it wasn't, it didn't happen. It wasn't live. No, but they try this stuff, don't they? That's like that programme I watched with a, a well, monkey. Well, who has ever tried to put a human head on a seagull's body? They've done loads of stuff like that. It's part of us moving on, isn't it? It's what are you talking about, I'm not going to get into arguing about well, science you're wrong. because it's all don't behind closed shit. doors. How do you think we can change a, a, a heart now from another body? You have to try things out. It's trial and error. All sorts of weird stuff goes on in hospitals, but we let it happen because it's to help us out in the long run, isn't it? But what, what are they aiming towards when they're going to find out if you can put a head on a seagull's body? What is that, what, what, what are they want to learn and what do they, how do they want to apply that knowledge? A new heart, it is obviously for a reason, it saves a life. Yeah, what is this, to, to save money on transport? Instead of getting a bus pass, you go, can, you, can I put a head on a seagull's body? I go, well, it won't work. Well, we'll try it. <laughs> yeah, but it is, there is odd things like that, like, uh, I saw a fish the other day, right, right. and uh, honestly, it's the weirdest thing, it was just like a blob with a face. <laughs> now, I would never have said, yeah, let that swim about, I'd have killed it from day dot, I would have gone, get rid of it. <laughs> oh, God! Under what circumstances would you have killed that from day dot? Oh, wh I'm just saying, looking at it, I'd say, that does not work. And it looked sad, it looked like it didn't want to be about... Have you got her number? <laughs> Jingle there, signifying, of course, once again, another reading from the diary of Carl Pilkington. Now, of course, for those of you who have not been keeping abreast of Carl's medical complaints, um, just bring us up to speed, Carl. You had to go into hospital this week because previously you'd had I've been treatment. in and out. Honestly, I've been yeah. in and out of that hospital just with uh, kidney problems, um, really painful and what have you. And, uh, yeah, you had kidney so, stones, all right. No, no, but seriously. Monday. I had a bit of a lion today because I have to get up early for my operation tomorrow. Not only have I got to have tubes shoved up my knob, but I also have to get up at 5.50. Suzanne said I could have what I want for my last dinner. It's not your last dinner, you're going for an operation. Yeah, but you, you, you can't take things for granted these days. Oh, for... I had shepherd's pie and peas. Suzanne made it from scratch. As nice as it was, it was annoying. Because making stuff from scratch means loads of pots, and it's my job to do the washing up. So much as the food was nice, there was loads of pans and that. People who get their last dinner on death row don't have to wash up. Got up at 5.55. You were supposed to be getting up at 5.50 on the other page. You were yeah. five minutes late getting up. He's often late. Often late. No, just because I needed to have water. Before six o'clock, they said, don't have anything after six. We'll get up at 5.50 then, like you're planned to. Don't you're having five minutes sleep in. Don't ten minutes to have water, though, does it? Well, why did you say 5.50 in the first place? Because then the it tricks me head, doesn't it, going, oh, I had an extra five minutes. Tricks me head. Because then it tricks me head. <laughs> it. Got to the hospital and had to wait in the waiting room. There was another nine people in there waiting to be sorted. I got called in. They sat me on a bed and took all my details down. Five minutes later, I'd been knocked out. I got woke up when they were ripping a pipe out of my throat. I felt more rough this time. The doctor came to see me and said he couldn't find a stone, so I must have passed it. I said, are you sure? He said, yeah, we filled your kidney with water and expanded it, and there was no hiding place. I sat in the recovery room for an hour while they found me a bed. One of the fellows who was sat in the room with me this morning got wheeled in. They couldn't wake him up. All the nurses were laughing because he didn't want to wake up. I bet they were laughing at me when I was in the theatre. Someone told me they totally strip you when they're operating. I would have looked like the alien on the Boswell incident. <laughs> Boswell! Boswell! <laughs> it's quite a nice analogy if it weren't for the fact that you said Boswell. <laughs> it's, it's the Roswell incident. Didn't sleep much through the night because there was a 60-year-old fella shouting at the nurse about his pillows. I don't think I slept through a full hour with one thing or another going on. My bed was next to the toilet so I kept hearing the flush. How do they sleep in hospitals though? They wake you up to give you fucking sleeping pills and things, don't they? How do you sleep in there? It's, it's always hot. It's always like 90 degrees. There's no air. Is that to make you drink water? I don't, I don't know what it is. There's no air. There's, there's an old fella across from me who kept breaking wind. He didn't even try and cover it. <laughs> it was just of that age where he didn't care. Just like, that's what I do. I'm in the hospital. Leave me alone. <laughs> what do you mean? Just, I, I don't know what was wrong with him. He's, uh, I talked to him because at first I felt sorry for him. I was a little bit like... 
you know, he's, he's had no visitors, uh, no one's calling him up, so I'll talk to him. But then he got that familiar with me that he'd just be doing it whilst I'm chatting to him. Just like he's my granddad or something, it's just like, oh, that's what he does. It's like, well, I'm ill as well. Stop doing that. <laughs> Honestly, unbelievable. He didn't even try and cover it with a cough. It was just like that's... <laughs> with a cough? How would you cover it with a cough? Just non-stop. Got home and sat down. My pains are coming back, but the doctor said this would happen at me insides are still in shock, so I need to take it easy. It's nine o'clock. I'm in agony. I can't do the diary for the rest of the day. Jesus. So you may as well just tell us then what happened. Right, well, yeah, after that, uh, went back in. Um, Suzanne just got frustrated with me because I was rolling about on the floor and she was trying to watch Arthur, right? <laughs> uh, so that was on the other night. Uh, I and, thought it was uh, when you lodge her. So, um... And she said, look, if you're in pain, do something. She said, you know... You went I, and got a cold plate. Yeah. No, use an ashtray. Plates are for liver damage. <laughs> she said, right, come on. Let's, uh... I, just, I can't put up with this. It was like two o'clock in the morning. So we, we left the flat and what have you. Uh, got in a taxi. Um, he filled up on the way, which was annoying. <laughs> <laughs> he did it. That he is did. cheeky. That, that really, I mean, he could on the way to the pain. hospital. So, uh... Because he's not an ambulance driver. Did you explain that to where you no, were going I, I was in that sort of thing where you just can't be bothered. Do you know what I mean? It was oh, in a sweat and stuff. He came back with a scratch card and some barbecue... <laughs> briquettes. <yeah. laughs> so anyway, he gets us there and he doesn't charge us, which is pretty decent, obviously. Oh, that's all right, yeah. Um, so I go in and there's like... I don't know if you've been in like A&E at like you know, half two in the morning. Oh. It's just depressing. Fluorescent light doesn't help because it makes everyone look iller than they actually are. So, uh, in there, there was uh, a woman who was just sat there crying. She wasn't holding onto any part of her body. She was just sat there whinging. And when you're feeling bad, you've got that going on. So you just want to tell her to shut up. <laughs> there was a fella who was, like, moped over in a wheelchair. That's someone I just chucked in. Moped over? <laughs> it looked like somebody had just sort of found him and wheeled him in. Nurse? Who's the guy moped over? <laughs> so this, this gay fella came through. And, How did you know he was gay? Um, just the way he was. I'm not having a go. He was a, he was a good fella. Do you know what I mean? A he's, doctor, you mean? No, he was like a, he was a nurse. Right. And he, he came through and just sort of went, oh, how are you? And I was like, oh, I've had better days. So he, he got As me you mentioned a... in the diary, I remember the first time when I came here, they said the nurse might put a tablet up my arse. I thought the chances of that happening had just increased. <laughs> oh, God! Yeah, but I, I would have let him do it. Honestly, I was that sort of out of it. That. Of course you'd let him do it. He's a qualified nurse. No, but the way I am now, say if it was just a tablet for sorting out my blood pressure, mm. and I walked in there and he went, oh, hello, and he said, yeah, let's pop that. I'd go, hang on a minute. <laughs> but, but what I mean is that <laughs> night, I, w- I would have just let him put three up, honestly. <laughs> it's just weird, isn't it, how your body just goes, let him get on with it, and you let you trust anyone, don't you, when when you're in that much pain and you need And a, they're a qualified nurse, yes. Mm. They uh, in, gave me some morphine. And my sort of head caved in again like last time. And then the pain went. But anyway, um, just turns out that I, I'd had a load of, like, blood clots in the bit from my kidney to my bladder, and that was acting as a sort of a stone again. Oh, it's just, so it's that's just what... a scab, isn't it, where it's curing it? So. No, but all the work, when they blew up the kidney, they blew up the kidney four times its normal size, so there was no hiding place for the stone. Yeah. So when they did that, it caused a lot of blood. It must have ripped the sides of it and stuff. And then that blood was in the kidney... And it went down the pipe and blocked it up a little bit. And that's the pain that I had. It was sort of... had problems getting through all this thick blood that they caused. So, uh... The weirdest thing that happened when I was in there, right? Uh, the, the morning, like, after I'd had the morphine and what have you, right? I slept pretty well. But I woke up and the... You have, like, a telly for your own bed. That, you, that you're allowed to use if you pay for it, right? So, so the glow from that woke me up because they come on at about ten past seven. And the telly's in front of your head. Right? <laughs> so you're getting this glow and you're going, oh, what's that now? <laughs> and uh, I looked at it, and all it had on, written on it is, uh, Carl uh, received bad news about your father. Right? And yeah. I was like, is this what they do now? Because it's such a big hospital that they just text your <laughs> sort of news to your bed. And I, I was kind of like, what's, like I say, it was early, it was ten past seven or whatever. Ian, what's, what's going on? I, I didn't have my mobile. Suzanne took that. And I was looking at it. I read it again. I thought, Does, he might come up with more, like, what's up with him? <laughs> Turns out it was just a review for Neighbours. It just tells you... 
it tells you what's on the telly that day. And there's some fella in Neighbours who's called Carl whose dad went bad. So that sort of woke me up a bit. I had a bit of a shock then. It was kind of like, so I was wide awake at like quarter past seven in the morning because my heart went a bit fast because I thought something had happened to me dad. Carl, of course, has written a poem about the experience entitled My Ward. All I've done here, I've been through a, you know, I uh, don't know what the word is, a, a bad experience. Trauma. A trauma, yeah, I've been through a load of trauma. Mm. So I'm just finishing it off with a little sort of picture for people. Go on then. In my ward. I know it's called my ward. Me, a Chinese fella and an old bloke who looked like Mr Burns from The Simpsons. Don't know what was wrong with him, but breaking wind was the symptoms. No one visited him or called him. He seemed quite lost to me. As well as wind problems, he had a colostomy. Back. When I left, I said, see you to the old man. Turned out the other fella wasn't Chinese. He was from Japan. <laughs> I never found out what was up with him. <laughs> You've got a little picture there, haven't you, of me sat in my ward. I'm sat there with that fella who I didn't talk to, the old fella who had wind problems. And that's what a poem is, isn't it? But the detail about you thought he was Chinese and he turned out to be Japanese, how is that evocative? That's just a piece of misinformation. It's just I like, like it. I imagine a lot of people make I like it, because you know why? It's like he even makes digressions within his poem. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like he could have gone back and erased that, but he didn't. He left, he left that digression in, and I think that's, that's great. It's pretty honest. Yeah. So, you know, you've done quite quite a few bits there from the diary, right? The other week you were saying a diary to sort of be famous and what have you, it's got to have a big event in it. That's a big event in my life, right? Mm. Peeps did a diary that had big events in it. You said about the fire on Pudding Lane. I had a kidney stone here. You write about puddings, you've had. So, is that now, is that as big as, is, is that a proper diary thing? It's but, a proper diary anyway. I think, personally, the five or six pages you've written about your ill health are genuinely interesting, and I'm sure, in years to come, people, it will be an interesting evocation of the NHS in this modern age, and how it is, what it's uh, like to be in hospital. What other diaries are out there? Well, a lot of them are fictional, of course, Bridget Jones and the like. There are lots of memoirs, but, but to publish a whole diary, why. I mean, you can well, get... Well, the, the two most famous d diaries, I'd have thought, was Peeps and Anne Frank. Yeah. Like Kenneth Williams' diaries were published after his death. Many uh, celebrity diaries have been published. Alec Guinness, people like that. And is that just their last year, or did they do it when they were doing a lot? Because oh, if yeah. they're old and sort of not working well, a diary doesn't... isn't that good. Well, often the, the moments, you know, prior to their passing are some of the most interesting. You see their, their final thoughts and final days. Yeah, but they just you say different things when you're ill. When I was on that table about to go under and you're thinking this might be it, different thoughts on the world. Do you know what I mean? Different priorities. Such the most profound thing that you thought that you know it was because of your illness? Um, just as I went under, the last thing I said to this woman was, oh, you look different with that on. And, <laughs> and <laughs> Oh, you look different with a hat on? Yeah, it was a woman who gave me the injection and she'd been round to the bed beforehand, sort of saying, right, you're allergic to this, can you eat strawberries? And I was a bit like, why are you asking me that? And she went, well, no, a lot of people are allergic to strawberries. And I was saying, but is there any trace of strawberries in the stuff? And she's like, no, it's just that a lot of people are... And I said, well, no, I, I eat them. And then she's like, what about fish? And I said, I like some, but I, I haven't had them all. And, uh, <laughs> and then she turned to Suzanne at that point and said, well, do you know of anything you can't eat? She sort like of said... A, like, like turning to the mother. Yeah. When the child can't answer. And, but she, she was, this was this woman, and she didn't have a hat on or anything. And then when I went down there, I didn't realise it was the same woman, until I was lying there and she started to inject me. And I just said, oh, you look different with that on. And then I went out, and, uh, and I, when I woke up, um, the woman sort of came round and just sort of said, oh, it's weird, that, that was the last thing, like you said. And, uh, that made me think that could have been my last... You know, like fight them on the beaches or whatever. Uh, <laughs> that could have been my little thing. You look different with a hat on, Carl Pilkington. <laughs> oh, God. In his own way, it's quite wise. People do look different with hats on. I, I think his last words would be something like, can this kill you? Yeah. Suzanne, can you drink bleach? <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, she bounced that. It's only gone and written it down. The jingle there to announce a yet another reading from Carl Pilkington's diary. Um, when are you going to write until, Carl? What have you got you're going to do? I've got to do As far as December and then that's it? Uh, I don't know. When does the diary end? 31st of December, usually. Yeah. Do it typical, there. always the same. <laughs> yeah, that's that's when I'll do it too, and then. Uh, why do that? Why just why be conformist? Why why end on December? Why not end on January the thirty first? Weird that you should go. Don't be constrained to what the diary Please. says. Me mam called me to ask me to like. Fuck me, you're right. That like look that should be. Me mam called me to ask me to look in some of the magazine shops in London for a magazine that she can't find. It's called UFO Data. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I ain't heard of it. She said she's seen an advert for it in one of her ghost magazines. I love the fact that she can't even find the magazine about unidentified flying objects. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we get, uh, we get a clue She there. thinks, I think I saw something, but I don't know whether it was a magazine or not. <laughs> <laughs> so we get uh, we get a clue there as to why you you uh, give any credence to this crap. Yeah, well, it's oh, you know, I mean, Mama Pilkington's into the same shit. There's a lot of space out there, isn't there? Mm. She said that this magazine has got new story about how Aldrin brackets astronaut has got some evidence that aliens exist. Oh, yeah, I told her that I found out today that the days are about thirty six minutes longer on Mars. We chatted about how this is how. They are more advanced than us. Do you mean the Martians? Yeah, if they've if they've got a longer day, that's more time that they're awake working on stuff. Right, yeah, we know that makes no difference at all. No, it does. Think about it. Think yeah. about it. Look, think about it. Six o'clock here. Yeah. People are going, see you tomorrow. I'm going home. They'll be going, oh, another half hour. <laughs> they've got a longer day. Productive. <laughs> and that's why they're able to fly. That's why oh, they're whizzing around. To fly. It adds up, <laughs> oh, it, over the years. Christ almighty, what drivel. Suzanne got in from work at 11.30. I told her about the UFOs in Mars. <laughs> she said she's too tired to chat. I said, does it mean aliens will be more tired than us, or do they get more sleep? I got no answer. <laughs> I uh, love it when it Suzanne goes in. She never indulges no, you. No, it scares she... her. Anything with ghosts and UFOs, she sort of... It doesn't scare it. her, it, it bores her. her. No, it freaks her out. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I'm knackered today, and the face feels dry and spotty. <laughs> oh God! What's wrong with oh, it starts off. It starts <laughs> off moaning. The first thing he does is start moaning. He wakes up and goes, "Oh fuck me! I didn't die." <laughs> oh, oh God! I'm knackered today, and the face feels dry and spotty. I think it's the change in water since being away, or it could be all the, f <laughs> it could be all the Madeira cake I had yesterday. <laughs> I'm gonna burst. <laughs> but what's I'm the Madeira burst. cake? The Madeira, Madeira cake dries you out, does it? <gasps> well, it's just quite fattening, isn't it? But I like it. It's one of my little pleasures. <laughs> oh, God, Suzanne put, I went for a wander about to try and find the UFO data magazine from a man. Mm. I didn't know which category to look under. There were too many magazines. I noticed how on the rude magazines, the women are being pretty rude on the cover, but on the gay magazines, it's just a fella <laughs> smiling, showing a bit of arse. <laughs> I don't know why gay blokes would buy it. Blokes have got their own knob to look at if they like knobs. <laughs> <laughs> why were you looking at the gay magazine? No, I wasn't. It's just oh, you were. were. No, I, we I were. You studied them. Yeah, because yeah, I was looking for it. UFO data. I yeah. don't know where they put it. I don't think you find evidence of other worlds down men's pants. Yeah, I don't think you want to boldly go where no man has ever gone before, Carl. I had no luck trying to find the UFO data magazine. I will try some other shops. He rather than he writes UFO data magazine every time. <laughs> he can just put UFO mag. But no, no, but I, it you reminds want to be right. me. You want to be of, if I write stuff down, it means that I remember it more. Sure. Well, still looking for it. Got some posts from Oxfam. They're flogging animals for Africa again. They've got new animals in their catalogue now. They've got donkeys and alpacas. Donkeys 50 quid, alpacas 20 pounds. I don't know if this is a special rate or if I could get one from a ma'am. She's been saying how they've been missing having a pet since they had the cat put down. Sorry, you don't get it. If you buy that for someone, you don't get it. Yeah, but they're not bothered where they're going. Yes, as long they as do. Of course, money. they don't. They don't. They don't deliver them. It's not like they're in a warehouse wondering, uh, people, thinking, "I oh, hope people buy this." They're going to put them out there. Yeah. They're, they're, but uh, at the end of the day, fifty quid's fifty quid, and they're not bothered. If they're right. sending an alpaca to Africa, yeah. and I'm saying, can you get one to London, to them that is less hassle. Right, Th that don't, th 
Uh, Carl, that's not how it works. You can't just go and say, oh, I'll have one of them. They're not bothered. It's for charity. Carl, of course they are. You can't buy an alpaca for twenty quid. <laughs> Christ, all my plus posters and packaging. They're big bastards. <laughs> Read about a pub that is getting some stick because they've stopped a horse going in. <laughs> it's been the horses regular for ages, but <laughs> there's been some new owners who've taken over the pub and they said they're serving fresh fruit and don't want a horse in there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. We've got a publicist diary. There's some dynamite we've stuff we've in here. We've got to publish the diary. I mean, this is never mind peeps. Can't we put this out next year or something with a oh, special CD? I I, I it just, it's amazing. You've got, you can't, you can't keep this from the world, Carl. I met Suzanne after she finished work and we went for a brew in another cafe. God, Jesus. It's always having a brew in a cafe. It's like a sitcom. <laughs> it is. Suzanne said I look tired and fed up. I think it's because I ain't been sleeping. Or the Madeira, okay? We don't know. <laughs> always been going to every news agency in London looking at gay magazines. <laughs> She taught me some way to breathe that will relax me. I wasn't feeling that relaxed, though, because the person behind the counter was banging about making a coffee. Noise stresses me out. I wonder if less deaf people die of stress than people with working ears do. <laughs> oh, it's the theories. It's the it theories. It is such a noisy world, though, isn't it? It is. Well, London is noisy. Very noisy. I think just everywhere. Just noise in general. They were saying yeah. how, like, every noise has been used... At least five times or something. What do you mean? Because there's only so many noises in the world. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. No, there's only so many what noises. What do you mean every noise has been used five times? <laughs> I don't know what that means. I don't know what it means. Because... I don't know. I have no idea. I've, I, every noise once has been used at least five times. There's only so many noises. It's like a piano, isn't there? There's only so many notes. Yeah. And there's only so many noises. Right. But because there's so much stuff, the same noises are being used again. I don't know what that means. <laughs> By whom? Who's reusing the noise? By whatever. So, so a woodpecker have... when it's woodpecking? Yeah, yeah. Some some birds make noises that would sound like a Ford Escort, just because there's, there's only so many noises that people can use. <laughs> what is he talking about? Noises are a byproduct. Outside yeah. an instrument, yeah. noises and... are a byproduct. They A machine, they don't go, what should we make this <laughs> noise, make this machine? It, it makes the noise it makes yeah, when but, it's doing something. why does it make that noise? Why not pick another noise? They don't pick well, the who's noise. Picking the noise? That's a printing what... press makes the noise because it's the sound of the thing yeah. going down. Yeah, you so know, printing... A hammer makes that noise because that's what it does. No one's going, oh, can we make this make a different noise? No, it's, it's a byproduct. I it's... know. So there's only so many noises. I don't know what you mean. You said the byproduct is because of something that's happening, right? But it's yeah. the physical action, isn't it? And the way that that impacts on the uh, the surrounding air. That's what noise. You know how noises are manufactured. It's when, not a when, choice. When Stevenson's yeah, rocket came, and I went. <laughs> I went. Can you make it go? It's what. That's the noise it made. I know, but then. Say, like, a new frog comes out. Oh, for f what do you mean a new frog comes out? They find a new type of frog, right. it makes a noise, and yeah. they'll go, yeah, I knew it was going to sound like that. What are you talking because about? Because there's only so many noises. Nothing, no, no animal comes out and makes, like, a weird noise, and you go, I've never heard that noise before. They go, oh, that sounds like a chicken, or it sounds like <laughs> a Ford Escort, or... <laughs> There's only so many what noises. What frog sounds like a Ford Escort? Well, no, there there can't be some many because you've used Ford Escort twice <laughs> as an analogy here. So you're running out of noises. You've I come can't. up with chicken and Escort so far. I can't explain it. But the problem it. is a Ford Escort sounds a bit like an Austin Allegro. So I, I know, know, yeah, yeah. And a chicken, you're ripping off the turkey, <laughs> you gun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's only going to rain it down for a whole fucking year. <laughs> That, of course, signifies another reading from Carl's diary. This is the last one of both 2006 and uh, on any podcast for a while. Let's make the most of it. Let's enjoy uh, some of the wisdom. I also Carl think it's the last time ever he will make uh, an entry in this diary because um, you're not going to keep another one, are you? Um, I don't know yet. I might just get a smaller one. But I've found that since keeping a diary, I've gone out of my way to do more stuff. Will you say that? But well, let's let's find out. Let's find out if that's true. No, I have. I read a bit in the news about people being injured while trying to cut open avocados. Hmm. It's a food that ain't worth injuring yourself for. <gasps> if it's a hassle to get into, 
Leave it to the experts. I have never bought one. I have also avoided coconuts and pineapples. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of hassle to get into these things outweighs the joys they give. Yeah. It's the same reason I never bought a pair of Dr. Martin boots. Too much hassle when it's time to take them off. Yeah, a lot of my mates used to wear them in, like, the 80s. You know, the, you can't just kick them off, can you? It's a big upheaval. <laughs> oh, you've, you've got to un unlace them, you All mean? The, yeah, I mean, I, I, since I found shoes with Velcro on them, brilliant. Just the way, I, I don't understand why laces- Is it because you can't tie your laces? No, I can do it, but it's wasted time. You're I so lazy. Wasted time. That gives him more time to sit around and look at insects eating biscuits. How long does it take, take off a pair of boots? Well, it's ridiculous. Seconds? He can't fit his days as it is. No, but I don't understand how some inventions sort of catch on and other things don't. But uh, this is what I mean, he's got too much time on his hands. Sitting around at home thinking, why are we not using Velcro more? But why there's one Velcro not? manufacturer going, yes, at, at last. last. He said what needed to be said. Why don't you get it sponsored? Because you could wear a Velcro toupee. Because <laughs> oh. that would be great if we could do that. If someone could invent a little hairpiece for Carl, Velcro's the little bit of fluff he's got on the top of his head, his shiny orange-like head. Pop a little Velcro toupee on. I would love that. I would love to get him wearing a wig. But no. why necessarily reduce it to a toupee? Why not some kind of carrying device? You know, he could carry goods and, uh, things around in there, sandwiches. Yeah, he doesn't look like carrying a bag. Well, what about that? A little thing you carried around, a little Velcro thing you carried a pot on your head? For, for your sort of, like, keys and trinkets and money and that. Well, no, I've, I've, I've told you about that idea that's out there but hasn't caught on as well, the, the tie. Right. The tie with loads of pockets and stuff in it. Yeah, but you've got to wear a tie. Yeah, but, th but that'd be quite nice, wouldn't it? I've never wore a tie because I always think, what's the point? It's just standing there in the way. <laughs> Can you imagine this image of Carl walking around <laughs> in his big Velcro shoes, a tie with an apple stuffed in it, <laughs> car keys, <laughs> yeah. iPod? No, but don't you think it's a good idea? Would you wear it with a shirt and collar or just a t-shirt? Um, no, wear it with a shirt. That's what I'm saying. It's an invention that will smarten up the world. Now, a tie, what does a tie do exactly? Yeah. What does it do? Nothing. Right. So I'm saying make it do something. But I'm saying don't wear it at all. Pop your keys in the trouser pocket no, or take I'm a bag. Because the world is getting more and more scruffier, isn't it? When you look I back- I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. When you look back at, like, Victorian times and everything, everyone wore a hat. Right? They wore a tie. They wore a suit. And it was a nicer looking place to look at. When you see it on pictures, you go, what a smart world that is. Mm. Well, you can't see cholera and things on pictures, but sure. No. No, but I'm just saying it's better to try and cover it up with a bit of, you know... Cloth. Yeah. Yeah. The world looked nicer with, with more cloth. Whereas <laughs> now everyone's rowing about scruffily. So, so what I'm saying is, if we make the tie more useful and give it a purpose, it might come back and the world will look tidier. But a tie... Its purpose is to look smart, really. Well, originally it was because we didn't have buttons, so it kept the collar up at the front. That was the invention. It was a useful invention, the tie. Yeah, that's It right. was called a tie. It tied together, okay? Yeah. So then, when we, uh, we had buttons that we didn't really need the tie, but it was a symbol of, of smartness, like saying, I've made an effort, yeah. okay? But now, that would go away. So now, you wouldn't look smart with a tie. They'd go, oh look, it's like a bag round his head with his, with his apples and oranges and his, his keys and his sticks he's making a nest out of. So it would it would be scruffy. It would make the tie scruffy, so it would defeat the object. So now, when you're carrying stuff round, I mean, crawling on all fours because you're shopping so heavy round your neck, <laughs> they'd go, "Look at that scruffy fucker on all fours." Oh no! Oh look! But look! Look at his lovely head of hair. <laughs> it's Velcro. <laughs> it's a hat. Yeah, well, that's the other problem, isn't it? I can't go back to a wig now. My theory about reading old news is right. It's less bad when you know it's old. It was a story about a weatherman who was fired yesterday for having a nude picture of himself on the internet. But that happened two days ago. He's probably got another job by now. So old news isn't as shocking. Well, old news isn't news though, is it? It's olds. <laughs> what are yeah. you doing? Just reading the olds? No, but what, what I mean is if, if someone- Stick says the you... video on of uh, last week's news, I just want to catch up on the olds. Yeah, but but then it's still news. If you, News is something that you don't know, isn't it? If someone tells well, that's you That's everything to you. That's information, Carl, not news. Yeah. But, but news is information. No, and the, what... key, the key with news is the word new. No, 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 I don't think it is, is it? It's, it's it is. just, it's just information, but they tell you at ten o'clock at night. It's like, what information's gone on? Bong. Here's some information. Yeah, that you didn't know before, because you couldn't have, because it only happened today. Bong. Yeah, but never mind that. I'll tell you in a couple of days, it doesn't matter as long as you get the same info. Bong. <laughs> yeah, we can't call it news, though, because it's misleading. We'd get done. It's called olds. Bong. Yeah, but listen to me theory. 
what I'm saying is, is that if someone in your family, you know, I don't want it's Christmas and that, I don't want to bring the tone down, but someone dies in your family. Mm. Now, say if you're away on holiday and they don't call you because they don't want to ruin your holiday, mm. and you come home and they go, Uncle Frank's dead, and you go, oh, when did that happen? And they go, two weeks ago. Now, because everyone else has got over it, it's not as bad for you. Because part of bad news is the way everyone's walking around moping, going, oh, have you heard the news? Frank's dead. But because everyone's got over it, time is a healer. That's what that's what I mean about old news. It's but better you, than new but, news. But, yeah, but according to you, the only news that really matters is stuff that affects you. So it doesn't matter when you... Uh, there was an earthquake. When was it? Yesterday. Phew, that's all right then. Often the aftermath is worse than the actual event. Two, you only care about things that actually happen to you. So the doctor goes, you got a kidney stone. Oh, when did this happen? Uh, two weeks ago. Oh, that's all right then. Doesn't make sense. No, but the world uh, but you're is- not, You're not upset about dead Uncle Frank just because other people are upset. You'd be upset personally. Wouldn't make any difference when you- when they told you. Yeah, but it, it is everyone else's emotions that- that make it worse, I think. Knocking around people who are miserable. What about warnings? What about when they do things like smog warnings or, you know, there may be a- I don't like it on the news when they sort of say, news just in, I think, oh, what's this? You think, oh, what's going on? But it might be, you might be useful might to be know it. might be important information. No, it just makes you panic. What? Yeah, but, but sometimes knowing stuff keeps you alive. Yeah, I, I don't know if I like it. It's, it's, sirens, you see, I don't like sirens, do I? I've, I've said to you, I think it's a, a scary noise. Well, it's meant to be, so you get out of the way. No, no, it's not meant to be. It's it's a sign to get out of the way. I'd prefer it if it- well, Like I've voice. said- Hiya! Oh, could you just move out of the well, way it can be us? anything, as long as we know- it can be a chicken noise. But as long as you know oh, that's, that's chicken noise- Oh, that's not gonna freak noise, people out. <laughs> no, but it sort of make you smile, but you'd- you'd go, oh, let's get what, out of the way. you're cycling along and you hear what sounds like a giant chicken behind you, and you smile, because you know that even though someone is burning to death, <laughs> There's something clucking in my way. Do 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 do. Quack! Do 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 do. Quack! Oh, that's probably a guy having a heart attack. Quack! Going to my mum and dad's today. Oh. Uh, I'll cut to the chase, Rick. They basically, it's uh, we got about four pages where they drive to his mum and dad's. Oh but Jesus! I'll skip Christ. past that because it yeah. takes fucking forever. Got there, <laughs> mum and dad. His mum made him some dinner. The old woman next door, brackets, whose man was a witch, just popped out <laughs> in brackets. <laughs> Just pop that in brackets. I think we've discussed that before, actually, the old woman whose mum was a witch. <laughs> whose mum was a witch? Yeah. Oh. The old woman next door has been worrying because she keeps seeing adverts on the telly about changing to digital TV. She's saying she doesn't want wires drilled into her walls because they'll make a mess. My dad told her that it doesn't matter <coughs> because it will probably won't happen until 2012 and she'll be dead by then. He didn't say that to her, though, did no, he? No, he did. They've got, you know, she, she's old. It doesn't, she knows she's going to die. I mean, it's something we've all got in common. And he's right, isn't he? Why is she worrying about it? Maybe that's sorted it out, put it into perspective for her. You will be dead when this happens, don't be worrying about it. But everybody worries, don't they? You've got that little sort of hole in your head that you fill with worries. You know, everyone's got to fill that little <laughs> worry worry hole with worries and that's us. Worry hole. Everyone's got to we've, fill the worry hole with worries. We've got to assume that there's a worry hole. A worry hole. That we fill with worries. I love the fact that, you know, doctors in a million years would dig this up and go, humans used to have a worry <laughs> hole. <laughs> Went to bed around midnight. Suzanne and I decided to sleep tops and tails, because it made we get a bit more room. Me dad had cut a bit off the mattress to fit it between two cupboards. It's amazing how much of a difference it makes <coughs> just sawing off a bit of the mattress. Mm -hmm. You sort of roll to the edge, but the weight of the blankets keeps you in. This is like something from a Roll Dowl book. No, it's just, it's just, uh, you know, you think a anything, you can sort of trim anything, can't you, and it normally works. But with a mattress, I mean, he, he only took off, I don't know what how long that is. But he's sawn off about that much on the mattress and then has stapled it back together again. Amazing. And it just makes so much difference. Of course it does, because a mattress is a very carefully designed object. Yeah, you wouldn't think so, though, would you? Well, you, you would if you had a fucking brain in your nuts. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> is he, is he, someone took his brain out of his worry hole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. He saw the mattress enough. So we decide to sleep tops and tails. It just gets stranger. It's so strange. Why? He did it to make the room nicer with the with the cupboards on either side. So he sorted a mattress in half. <laughs> well, not in half. Can you imagine how much hard it must be to saw a mattress in half? What did he use? What, a big electric saw? Uh, well, it must have been, yeah, because there's a lot of springs and stuff in there. Jesus. So what happens to the springs? They just spring out the side. Well, some, some sort of stick out a little bit, but you're not lying on top, are you? They come out the side. 
So he's just got a bit of gaffer tape and a staple gun. That's Unbelievable. Oh, hey, man alive. It's like- Does he run it as a hotel? <laughs> That's unbelievable. There are squats with better bedding arrangements. Well, we've had a bit of a bad thing in our house about mattresses and that, because when we first bought our, uh, first flat in Salford, you know what it's like when you buy somewhere, you, you, you sort of, you haven't got any money, have you, to buy extra stuff that you need. Mm. So, we bought a bed, right, but there's that rip-off thing with beds, where you buy a bed, but a mattress doesn't come with it, mm. which I've never understood that. Because it's not a bed, is it? Without that mattress, it's not a bed. It's a car without an engine. You wouldn't go there. You go. Well, that seems cheap. There's no engine in it. So we bought this. We bought this, like you know, uh, flat, what have you. And we bought the bed, and then uh, like, oh, we haven't got a mattress. So my dad got one from Uncle Skip. Alf. <laughs> no, well, from that Uncle Alf fella, because he had one in his van that he used to use now and again if he was like travelling round. He'd just keep in the in the back on this mattress. Amazing. A bloke who drove round in a van with a mattress in the back. So Uncle Alf. Alf. So Uncle Alf, right? Well, tell me about Uncle Alf. Well, you know about him. He's the one who slept in a dinghy. Because his mattress was in his car. <laughs> no, yeah. Why didn't he go? Oh, well, Alf, where's the bed? Left it in the car again. Oh, blow up the dinghy. <laughs> blow up the dinghy. I'm not going to go out and get the, not at this time of night. So mm. anyway, <laughs> my me dad got me got me his mattress and uh, and it just stunk of diesel. <laughs> And Suzanne was like, oh, I'm not happy with this. And I think she realised sort of what sort of family- She's got herself into. Stuff. Wow, she landed on her feet when she S got you. So now she? she's always a bit touchy about, you know, mattresses and things. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Uncle Alf, of course, sadly passed away when he couldn't escape from his sinking ship. <laughs> <laughs> the fire engines were too late. <laughs> no one got out of the way because they were laughing so much. <laughs> the mad woman next door saw me and said, hello, Clive. <laughs> Nursery rhyme. The old man down the road. Yeah. The old woman next door whose mum's a witch. <laughs> Uncle Alf who lives in a dinky. <laughs> this is like not a real place. It's like fucking it's Narnia. A, it's a children's TV <laughs> program. Unbelievable. Oh God. Oh, just all of them there on this broken mattress trying to find the golden <laughs> ticket. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> oh God. The old fella down the road talked to my dad a bit. He kept bees in the back garden. Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> Here comes the bee man. His Yorkie dog was knocking about when he was messing with them, and it ended up getting stung 150 times. <laughs> Poor little bastard! What is he doing? <laughs> it's not dead, but it cost a lot to get all the stings out. I don't know why people keep dangerous pets and insects. The amount of gear he had to wear to play with them is barmy. I don't think he's playing he's with them. He's not playing with them, is he? Well, he's, what is he doing then? Well, I don't know, but I think it should get the dog the same protection. Yeah, but but uh, that's just it, isn't it? It's like you can't mix your pets. If you've got a snake, you don't have a mouse. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? They don't get on, and it's the same with them. Don't have bees. I can't imagine one bit of enjoyment. The, the only thing he does is the honey, and it's like, well, how much is that to buy? It's not worth messing about wearing a big white suit just to get some honey. There's a shop down the road. Bees are kept for a very good reason, aren't they? What for honey? Yeah, no, but like I say. You can buy honey for next to nothing. Where do you think- what do you mean? But wh where does the honey come from that you buy? Yeah, from- from some proper bee farm. Let yeah. them do it. All he's doing, he's not making loads of pots of honey. Mm. He's looking after himself. And the thing with honey is it doesn't go off either. No, it doesn't, no. So- so get ten bees, Yeah. get the honey made, kick them out. <laughs> <laughs> but you- but you eat the honey, that's the point. Yeah, I know, but it doesn't need it. You can't eat it, and then it's still there in the jar. It's not magical. Maybe in your world, no. your un Uncle Fred had that never-ending jar of honey. But how much honey do you eat? What I'm saying is, it's one of them things in it that you buy, and you can move into a new house, buy some honey, and when you leave that house, that honey's still in the cupboard. You don't <laughs> eat that much of it. So get ten bees, get your honey's worth. Ten bees! Imagine keeping ten bees! <laughs> well, just get them to do do the graft. If you've got loads of bees, they're not all pulling the weight, are they? Because they'll go, well, I'm not doing any, because I'll leave it to the others. No. Right, so if you've got ten bees, y you know that none of them are pulling the weight if there's no honey. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> no, they don't, no, it's not a workhouse. <laughs> bees don't knock around saying, ah, oh, I've got a bad back. Anyway, back to, uh, this reading from the twits. <laughs> yeah. The news covered a story about a fish that knocked about 400 million years ago. Mm. It was 33 feet long and had a jaw strong enough to eat a shark in one go. Mm. All the dangerous stuff seems to die out, and yet things that you think wouldn't stand a chance, like worms, are still here, yet they have no legs or eyes. I saw a future human in the news article the other month about the future woman. She had three breasts. They looked all right. Well, no, that's not. I, I can't see how that's going to ever evolve. 
No, well, they say about our, um, about evolving and that, I read that um, there's going to be ugly people. People are starting to go ugly. Yeah, they're still going to have bilateral symmetry, I imagine. I, I don't know what that means, but well, I'll, tell well, you, I'll tell you now, right? <laughs> well, they're talking about, like, people who are just like, you know, you look at them and you go, what kind of state of that, right? Mm. And it'll get to a point when we're all so ugly that no one will have it away and we're just going to die out. Well, that's not true either. <laughs> that's not true either. That that is the biggest worry. Well, no. So that's the world's so, biggest. So worry. as we evolve and we change, uh, our mindset doesn't change. We're still going. Oh, I wish we. I wish we looked like they did a million years ago. I don't fancy anything. No, but look at um, look how things do change. But why are we all going to get ugly? I don't understand. It's just the air and stuff, isn't it? It's just um, the air or yeah, the just, hair. You know, the the air that we breathe and stuff, mm. and uh, the food we eat. Everything's changing, and we're not going to look that healthy, and uh, we're just all going to go ugly. You've only got to look at some stuff that's in the sea, and you think, look at the state of that. What's and that's that got to do been... with the human evolution? But, but the stuff because in the sea is still longer. propagating. Yeah, but they've been around longer than us. But it's still reproducing, so your theory falls down. But they're deep down, aren't they, in the dark, so they probably can't see what they're having it away with. <laughs> if they were up on the outside, they'd have died out ages ago. Why? Because they wouldn't fancy the other stonefish or Yeah, because they're really odd-looking. I can't remember the name. I think it was a viper or something. It's the, it was just a head. But, Carl, the a reason... fish, that's just a head. <laughs> it was well ugly. Watched a programme about the twins this morning. It was filmed 16 years ago. They are mental. They did everything together, including the vacking up. Phone calls had to happen twice so they could both have the same chat, and they said the same stuff at the same time. Well weird. The bloke who I watched it with, I don't know who that is, just some homeless guys that you just invited into the no, flat? just someone I've been sort of working with. Sure, a mate of yours. He said he fantasised about having it away with a pair of twins. I don't see the point in this. If you're going to have two of something, I would prefer to have two different. Have two different women. If I had two cars, I wouldn't have the same one twice. Same rule with women. I don't even normally like buying the same pair of trainers twice in a row. No, if you're going to have something new, make it make a change. It's like that fella who was going out with a woman and then left her and went out with a twin sister. Not worth it. <laughs> not worth it! It's not worth the upheaval, is it? Because it's exactly the same model. I watched the final of I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. It was between singer Jason Donovan, singer Mylene Class, and singer Matt out of a boy band. I had my money on Donovan, but Matt won it. I think it was because of his last task. He ate a fish eye, some grubs, a big fat insect that they have on every year, a crocodile knob, and a kangaroo anus. I feel like we've, uh, we've, we've come there, Rick, to, to where we entered. It was this time last year when we first started the podcast that um, we were talking about, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. And you coined the famous phrase, I could eat a knob at night. Yeah. So it's full circle. It's just the, the, the last series uh, finished recently. And it was astounding that he ate a crocodile knob. He ate a crocodile eye. He chewed up and swallowed a kangaroo's anus, which I, I to be honest, I didn't know was a food stuff. Could you eat any of that? Um, if I had to eat any of them, it would have to be the anus. What, really? Yeah, more than the other stuff. I couldn't eat anything that's still alive. No, I agree. Uh, I, I couldn't eat any of that. I don't, I don't know under what circumstances I'd have to go, right, that's it now, we're not going to survive, the ship isn't coming, there is nothing on this um, island I can eat, give me the, the cat crocodile's penis. So it wouldn't bother me. Wouldn't I, I, wouldn't, I could eat anything. I could do almost all of the challenges on that programme, but I couldn't cope in the camp. I couldn't cope with the lack of food and the uncomfortable bed. That's all that would do my head, and I'd drive people spare, whinging and complaining. I, I couldn't cope with any aspect of it except the physical challenges. I couldn't cope with sleeping with people snoring, the uh, things crawling over you. Uh, oh, I'm not, 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 not so squeamish about that, like snakes and things, that's all right. But the eating would is is ridiculous. It's out of the question to eat a worm or a grub. I, oh. It doesn't concern me. I don't know why it's... I don't see really what the difference in it... The texture is probably the same as lots of other things. What would mean? hunger do to you, though, do you think? Would you think I would change? Do you think... If it really was a choice, if someone said... And I knew I would die if I didn't eat worms. I think that... you would, yes. I think you'd complain and you'd whinge for a while and you'd try and put it off and you'd hope a ship would turn up. But when it didn't, you'd start chowing down on a bit of uh, crocodile anus. But then where's the rest of the crocodile? Well, yeah, that's I a good point. I say, who's been eating that? How come I've got this? 
you know, you're meant to, you know, work together as a team in bad time, and yet I'm being handed an anus. Forget it. Let me starve. <laughs>